everyone, welcome to another Friday night, which you know what that means, another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I'm here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time that you are gracing our channel with your presence, first of all, thank you, warm welcome. The way this works is super, super simple. On your screen, you're gonna see a chat box. You can enter your question, comment, concerns, things that are bothering you, hopefully mostly lawn care related in that box, and I work through them in the order they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I do not, but either way, either way, we have an awesome time talking about lawn care. Guys, the weather is so nice out today. I decided to try something different. We'll see how it works. I'll probably only be out here for the first 45 minutes or so, but I should be able to transition fairly seamlessly to the indoor studio once the time comes. So I'm gonna try for like 30 minutes or so, first 30 minutes of the show uh, outside. So let's see who we have in the show tonight. Let's see who we got here. Okay, we got Jerry Sobel. Jerry got a new new piece of hardware, which is pretty awesome. Congrats on that, uh, on that, Jerry. Uh, we got VMH saying, hey, Ron, happy Friday. I wish we had topper sink service in my area. Yours looks awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. awesome. Here with it behind me. If you guys want to check it out, check, you know, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll get from in front of the camera and I'll pan it around. You guys can take a look at it if you guys want to see it live versus me just taking videos of it, right? How about that? We might, might be able to make that happen. All right, we also see here tonight we got Jerry Sobel. Jerry's saying, hey, Ron, ordered the Sterling 20-inch with the cultivation cartridges. I like it. I like it. Can't wait to make my stripes. We've got to clap it up for that, Jerry. You're starting the night out, right? You're starting the night out, right, for sure, man. I like that. I dig it. I dig it. All right, so let's see who else we've got here. we got Thin Cut in the, in the house. Thin Cut in the house saying, saying, what's up? What's going on, Thin Cut? Hope you're doing well. He says, good evening, Ron. Just sent you a picture of a wee taking over my yard. I'm gonna do my best to try and, if I can see if I can get that while I'm out here, Thin Cut. Worst case, at, at the top of the hour, or maybe a little sooner when I transition back to, to the indoor studio, I will, um, I'll take a look at it then because it's a little bit more difficult to do that on my laptop here because I don't have everything like, like I normally do inside when I'm, when I'm out here. But I will take a look at it. I promise you that. I will take a look at it. All right, we got Colin uh, Powell say, evening, everyone. What's going on, Colin? Hopefully you're doing well. And Gus P. Music saying, good evening, folks. What's going on, guys? So, guys, here's the thing. Uh, I've, if you guys have not been following the channel, uh, I'll give you a quick update on the lawn. You can tell behind by looking at behind me, it's kind of a mess right now. Uh, the lawn was top-dressed Monday. Monday had a service come out, and they, they did their work over the entire lawn. And it's recovering pretty nicely, but it's still... And it's probably got another week or so before I'll be out there mowing. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You know, you guys know me. I'm, I'm not one. I'm not one to necessarily always be patient with time to get out there and get the get the mower back out on the lawn. But uh, but you guys know I'll I'll I will uh, I'll, I'll be out there as soon as I possibly can. As soon as I possibly possibly can. All right. Uh, Rich Too Bad says. Let's see here. He says, uh, Hey Ron, I'm getting closer to getting a real mower. Here's the thing, Rich. I mean, I think that's a, that's a great. I mean, it depends depending on how much, 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 an awesome investment. As far as um, what's going to work best on your Bermuda, Zoysia, any type of grass, ryegrass, um, Kentucky bluegrass, particularly grass that likes being cut shorter, that is when uh, having a real mower is really going to shine. Uh, people use them on taller grasses like uh, fescue and St. Augustine, but you're really using the wrong tool for the job. But yeah, I mean, if you have the time to do it, if you have the time to do it and the desire to do it, then absolutely get out there. It's one of the best things you can do for your lawn. It will never look better uh, versus whenever you're out there real mowing. It's a, it's another, it's another level. It's another level of, uh, of, of awesomeness, of awesomeness. All right. Uh, next up, so, so uh, Rich, you have to let me know what kind of mower you're thinking about, man. You said you're thinking about a mower, but you didn't tell us which, what kind, what kind you're, you're considering. All right, uh, Gus P. Music says, a little late for coffee, so cheers. I appreciate you. I'm just having some water here, but uh, you guys know, try to stay hydrated. Even though it's a little bit warm, even though it's, it's nice weather right now, it's a bit warm outside, so I decided to stick with my water, as as always. Mr. Robert Rainey's in the house. It's good evening, everyone. Hey, Robert, I hope you're doing well, sir. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, all is going well with your lawn. You guys are, your lawns are, are doing well given all this heat. The thing that I've been seeing, guys, more and more is, um, is I'm getting email from people saying, hey, you know, I'm starting to get scalping in areas that I did not get scalping before. Uh, I'm getting in, and that's, a, a lot of that is just due to the lawn just thickening up, especially if you're someone that mows very, very frequently, right? So, you know, there's a couple of options for that. Uh, the the mid-season scalp is, off, is obviously a choice. It's a little bit, aggressive in other words the lawns look pretty ugly when you do if you go that route 
but as far as that or verticutting, something along those lines is going to really do a lot to really help thin the lawn out and, and keep it looking good. But, uh, but thanks for coming to hang out, Robert, in the, uh, in the Friday Night Live stream. I appreciate you as always. We've got T1000 saying happy Friday, folks. Hope you're doing well. And then next up is it's Audacity says, thanks for all your help this season, Ron. I've learned a lot, uh, and the yard looks great. That's awesome. I bet you your yard looks better than mine. You guys want to see a shot of what the, what the yard's looking like right now? I mean, some of you guys that watch the, probably follow me on YouTube stories already know, but I'll, I'll get around here and I'll actually give you guys a live pan of what the lawn is looking like. So it's, uh, let's just say it, it's seen better days. It's seen better days, but as you can tell, it's growing in pretty nicely from the top dressing already. It was top dressed on Monday, which is, which is pretty cool, right? Pretty cool stuff that it's, uh, that the lawn is recovering that, uh, that quickly from all the, from all the work. So it's got to get worse before it gets better, right? That's, that's, uh, that's the, the mantra. That's the mantra for a great lawn. It's got to get worse before it gets better. So, all right. Uh, you're very, very welcome. It's audacity. But here's the thing though. Yes, I, I may have given you some, some decent advice that helped you get your lawn where it is now, but you did the work. So you'd be surprised how many people send me these long typed up, these huge uh, emails Asking, 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 and then they don't do the stuff that I, I recommend. So you actually did it, which is why you got the result. It's good, great stuff. All right, uh, Gary uh, Kellett Jr. is serious. Is happy Friday to the to the Friday Night Lawn Care crew. What's going on, Gary? Thanks for coming to hang out as uh, as always. I appreciate you, sir. Appreciate you. And then we've got uh, Ben Ben Hutzpa saying a morning from Sydney, Australia. Wow, from down under. That's pretty awesome, man. It's pretty awesome that you guys are, are deciding to come, that you, know, you took some time out of your day to come hang out from, from, uh, from being down under. I wonder what time is it now in Australia. I should know that. Are you guys like 12 hours ahead of us or, or how many hours? You got to let me, uh, you got to let me know, Ben, how many hours, what the hours, the time differences between um, where you are in Australia and, uh, and where we are here in, in America, in America. But I appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Great stuff. All right, uh, LG is up next. He says, can't wait to, to, to see a top dressing update, especially after the heavy rain. So here's the thing, LG. Hey guys, I gotta tell you something. If you're in Northeast Georgia and you want it to rain, just let me top dress my lawn because it makes sense that after you top dress your lawn, it would rain, right? And we haven't had, we had, we were, were calling for 90% uh, rainfall this afternoon. It, it like, the entire patio would even get wet. Like there were like little spackles of raindrops and that's all I got. So I've been watering the lawn a bit to try and help, uh, you know, help it, help it along. You know, I've been trying to do what I can as far as, uh, as, try, as, far as getting it to, to, to recover and to, to come back since Mother Nature isn't, isn't really cooperating with me. But, uh, but yeah, that's all I can do. That's all I can do without, without, uh, without getting a bunch of rain. You can see, guys, it's, I mean, from, from how it looks in this picture, compared, paired, 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 showing you guys just live a second ago in the pan, the, the lawn is growing through pretty quickly. I can't wait to get the mower back out here to see how it how it does to see how it does all right uh danny is up next this is a good question he says how often should you level your lawn until it gets to where you like it that's a great question uh danny so the thing with leveling i i will say that you know after i really after the second time you start to get into the point of diminishing returns now it, it does matter where you're starting if your lawn is like a you know a bmx bmx like dirt track then you know it may take you a couple of sessions to really get the lawn where it needs to be but if your lawn is relatively flat like mine like well, a lot of what you see here it really got that way i got 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 first top dressing the second one really got me 90 percent there the, the benefit to top dressing even after the lawn looks pretty good is that you know if you're out in the lawn a lot and you're, you're mowing a lot that tends to introduce wear and by top dressing it, even just doing a light one, you're gonna help fix some of that wear so you don't have areas where you might scalp. And you guys can't see it here, but I'll, I'll show you guys perhaps on, on the YouTube story tomorrow morning. There's actually a couple of lines in the lawn where the sand filled in, which I can tell are areas that were, you know, were the, from the mower, from just from just wear from, from being mowed. So it really, it takes you a couple of times. Uh, you will never get the lawn at least for me anyway, you'll never get the lawn 100% to where you're saying, yeah, it's exactly how I want it to be. But, uh, but I'd say twice. For most lawns, a couple of top dresses really gets you, gets you most, of the way, most of the way there. So, but it really depends, again, on how, where you're starting from. It really depends on, uh, on that. All right, uh, let's see. Ben from Australia has a question. He says, 
Should I dig trenches for a French drain and irrigation at the time of lawn renovation? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would. I would. I mean, you think about it. You're, you're going to be destroying the lawn anyway. You're going to be out there tearing it up, digging it up, making a big mess. Why not do it? Why not do it then? You know what I mean? You don't want to have the, you don't want to have the lawn looking all really nice and take that time to go dig it up and, uh, and make a mess out of it. So if it were me, I would absolutely wait two or during renovation times. So if uh, so by your reno, if you're going to burn down your existing lawn, then then that's the time to do it because really, because the grass is going to be dead anyway, no one's really going to be noticing like, you know, the fact that you've got some areas that are dug up and you're, you know, you're putting in plumbing and all those kind of stuff. It, it's already going to look bad. So why not like, like just, you know, consolidate all the bad into one, into one time period. You know what I mean? That's so, so yeah, I absolutely would do them uh, both at the same time. Now for irrigation, depending on what you guys have in Australia, options for irrigation. Now here in Georgia, sometimes they will trench, they'll, they'll actually dig trenches, which is more the traditional way of doing it. Or they can use a, uh, a vibratory trencher. If you guys saw the video of how Alex got his lawn, uh, um, the irrigation stall on his lawn, they use a, a ditch witch with like a, this, like, it's like a spine that went in the ground and it, it vibrated and it, and it pretty much drug the pipe or pulled the pipe right through the lawn. It did relatively little damage to the lawn compared to trenching. So irrigation, I wouldn't say you absolutely have to do at the same time you're doing a renovation, but, uh, but a French drain, absolutely. And if you're going to be doing irrigation the traditional way, which is digging out a trench and laying the pipes and putting the valves in all this kind of stuff, then do it at the same time. That's what I would say. So guys, we're just getting started, but if you guys would not mind touching that like button ever so gently for me, I'd really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you guys anything at all, and it's a great way to support the channel. So if you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button, getting the likes up a bit so we can get some, some good vibes to the algorithm, get more people to come hang out with us uh, on, our, on our Friday night turf talk, I would really, really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Let's see, uh, Cold Pillow says, Ron, if you get a chance, review the one I sent you by email. You can respond in this format, no need to response. Hashtag saving keystrokes. I'll have to check it out when I get inside. I'm not sure, when did you send the, uh, the email to me, Cold? If you send it right before the live stream, when I go back inside to my main computer where I have all that stuff pulled up, I'll be able to look at it then. But um, I'm not sure exactly um, which, what you're, what you're referring to, but I, I will take a look at it. If you, if you didn't send it yet, uh, else when I go inside and I look at it, it'll be right there. I won't have to go hunt for it. And just say, hey, this is Colt Pillow from the live stream, if you don't mind. It makes my life a bit easier. A bit easier. All right. Um, next up, we have Ahmed Jones. Ahmed might have an issue here. He's going on vacation. I mean, the vacation part's not bad, but there might be a lawn challenge here. He says, good evening. I'm on vacation in Orlando at Disney World with the family. I'm from Memphis and my lawn is the best looking in the neighborhood. I love the Hydrotain. That's awesome, man. So you got to get out in Disney, which is cool. And and Hydrotain is awesome stuff. I mean, they the uh, the nice folks at the College L just released a new product, a foreplay, which is a College L, um, a, let me see, there is um, a surfactant in it. And there are two other two other products. I, I, I'm trying to, I think I have my notes here. Forget everything that's in it. I don't. I don't. I don't know it as much as well as I as well as I remember what's in Hydrotain, but uh, but but yeah, there's four products in that. And that's like Hydrotain 2.0, and you guys have been buying it up, and it, it can't stay in stock, which is uh, great. Yeah, so it's it's Hydrotain. Um, there's C Extra, which is our kelp product. But the majority of it is Hydrotain. So what you are mainly buying is Hydrotain with some extra sauce in there, right? But I'm glad I made that. You know, your lawn's looking great. The heat is finally, the edge is, is finally starting to come off this heat that we've been getting here. There was a time there, man, when it was, it was really rough and um, it's, it's not quite as bad. We have days in the 80s and 90s, but it's not like when we were in the high 90s and 100s, uh, you know, a, a few weeks ago. So your lawn is, is probably over the worst part of, uh, of the pain, of the pain for this growing season, which is great stuff. Glad you're having good results with Hydrochain. I love it. I use it on my lawn as well. All right. B Gaines, Ben is here to update us. He says, hey Ron, septic repairs completed in the backyard this week, ruining my summer appearance. Contractor scheduled to install 1,700 square feet of replacement sod in two weeks. And nice. Here's the thing, uh, Ben, I'm really going to be interested in seeing how the sod they put in matches your existing lawn. Because I have not had very good luck with that. Me personally, I have not, have not had good luck with whenever they put sod, like, you know, you take a tree out or, you know, you're repairing some kind of damage, you put um, replacement sod in. I have not had a good success with it matching exactly, but we'll see, 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 we'll see. Your, your septic work done, that it's all repaired, and that uh, we'll see how it, how it recovers from um, from the sod work once they uh, once they get that in. 
Great stuff. Great stuff. Thanks for keeping us updated. All right, next up is Mr. Mike uh, Harvey. He says, 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 when can I put the mower on it? Great question. We're going to talk about that. When I finally do start mowing, do I cut my normal height or higher? Great question. So you'll know. So right now my lawn is still a bit early to do it, right? But when you have more grass coming through than there is sand, that's when you can consider putting the mower back on the lawn. The thing you have to realize is that unless you wait for the lawn to be largely filled in, you are you are going to probably touch a little bit of sand with the mower as you're cutting. So there's a couple ways we can kind of, you know, get still allow, still allow us to mow the lawn while, while not um, damaging or dulling the, the, the reel and bed knife uh, prematurely. And that's just to raise the height of cut. So last year, whenever I was it last year, yeah, last year when I top dressed the back lawn, um, I raised the height of cut two tenths of an inch. I went up to uh, 20, uh, two tenths. Um, and that probably wasn't quite enough. I went up to, uh, you know, two tenths and started mowing and it did a pretty good job, but I did dull the greens master. You know what I mean? After eh, two weeks of mowing, I started noticing that it just, the mower wasn't cutting as well. So you might want to go up, you know, a quarter of inch, three tenths perhaps, um, and, and see how it does, you know, at that, at, in, if you do that, but two tenths for me was not enough. And my lawn is relatively flat. I don't remember really getting into a lot of sand when I was out there mowing. And a, a tip is if you have a real mower, Mike, is whenever you're going over an area that's still like a big sand spot, don't run the mower over that. Like what I tended to do is whenever I was going over, I, I'm mowing like grass and then sand and then grass, I would mow my grass and when I got to the sand, I'd pop a, like a little light two inch wheelie and then sl gently let it back down on the grass just on the other side of where all that sand was. So if you can avoid running over big areas, big areas of just of lots of sand, do, do that. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, when, the, when the, the grass is largely filled in, if you are trying to not dull uh, the reel uh, and bed knife, if you do it like, like how my lawn looks now, you know, I'd, I'd have to raise it up at least a quarter of an inch to ensure that I, I don't, again, like one session and I'm having to take it out for sharpening, right? So it's really your call. <coughs> I am not a fan of letting the lawn get super tall, uh, but again, letting it 100%. So kind of pick your, pick your poison, you know what I mean? When it's, um, if you're mowing at three quarters of an inch, like how I am, right? When it gets to say an inch and a quarter, an inch, inch and a quarter, somewhere in between there, get out there and mow it. Just raise the height of the mower up a little bit so you're just taking off, just kind of evening out the appearance of the lawn. But at the same time, you really want to avoid sand. Unless, unless taking your mower in to get, sh get, uh, to get sharpened is no big deal for you. It's, uh, it's really your call on whether that's going to bug you or not. You know, for me, it's a... Uh, it's a quite a drive to take it to Jerry Pate, but um, but yeah, it's it's your call. Great question, man. Great question. All right, next up is Robert Mahoros. I think I, I think I keep saying I keep butchering your name. So somebody you need to send me like a, a a vocal recording of how to pronounce your name properly. He says, "Say, Ron, uh, let's have a great evening. Hopefully, you have any ideas on how to get rid of dove weed of a bad dove weed problem. There should be several herbicides that will, that should knock that out. I'm not sure if Celsius is rated for dove weed." Um, um, Ahura, Robert, I, I think, I, I want to say so. Dove weed's not a, not a terribly tough one to kill. Yeah, dove weed's on here. It sure is. Sure is. Yeah, so, so, so depending on what you, um, on what you're, what you're looking to do, uh, Robert, I would use Celsius. I'm almost positive Celsius, uh, will, will, I thought it would, but just confirmed there in the, um, uh, in by looking at the label that it, that it does, it will treat left dove weed. There's a couple other products that will do dove weed. 2,4-D as well should take care of dove weed. That's not, a, that's not a terribly difficult one to get rid of. However, given the temps that we have now, and if you already have it, I would opt for Celsius. That would be my, that would be my, uh, my recommendation. You know, absolutely go with Celsius. It's going to take care of it, and it's going to also do the least, uh, it's going to have the, the least chance of doing damage to your lawn if you decide to go with that, that particular herbicide. When you uh, use it, when you decide to use Celsius, use surfactant with it. So actually, I can show you. We can, we can see if I can make this work here. Um, so if you go to the golf course lawn, and then shop and then weed killer, the herbicide I'm talking about is this guy right here, which is Celsius. Uh, and then you're going to want to use a surfactant with that professional dust. So all you care about is just the dove weed. Uh, Celsius, uh, Celsius and then a surfactant should be all you need to really, really knock that out. So, uh, so hopefully that helps, sir. Again, dove weed's not a tough one to get rid of. Just make sure you use a good surfactant with it. Make sure you read the label in the description of the video uh, that you're seeing there on the, you know, on the golf course lawn store where we have that. In the description for, sorry, the product description rather, there's a video that shows you how I mix it. It's not the only way to do it, but it's how I do it and get a really good result. So it's your call. It's your call. 
Next up, we see uh, Mary J says, "Am I blocked? No, you're not blocked. I can hear you. You're here. I'm hearing you. I'm seeing you chat. You're uh, you're in here, Mary. I'm not blocked." Uh, all right. Next up is um, Mike Harvey. He says, "Guys did a great job. Only thing I don't like is they didn't pick up the cores after aeration. Bunch of smashed plugs laying around. It'll break up, uh, Mike. That's that's not that big a deal. I don't tend to pick up the plugs on my lawn after a top dressing job. So uh, you know, I wouldn't you know I wouldn't sweat it. They they will break up." over time and it's nothing to really, you know, it's nothing really to, to be overly concerned about. Now, I, there are some people that have um, like really, really heavy clay soil to where those plugs get super, like they get hard, like almost like little um, little rocks uh, and, and little bricks. And in that case, yeah, you, you might want to get those off the lawn. But if it's a case where they are being mad, 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 every time you mow, they're going to break up. Another tip you can do, Mike, you didn't ask this, but it'll help with that, is if you have a leveling rake, I'm not sure if you do because you had someone do it, but if you have a leveling rake, even if you, even if you don't top dress the lawn yourself, it's worth having one of those. Get a leveling rake or a broom and just drag the lawn. What that's going to do with those cores is it, is it should help start breaking them up, and the ones that are a little bit more stubborn, they'll all get gathered at the end of like your run. So whenever you just drop the leveling rake down, you're walking and walking along your merry way with a drink in your hand or doing whatever you're doing, uh, you know, the, most of the cores are going to break up, but if they don't, the, when you get to the end of that pass, the cores will be collected inside the leveling rake. So that's a tip to get rid of them if you want to, you know, if it really bugs you, but honestly, I, I wouldn't sweat it. I wouldn't sweat it. They will go away. They will go away once, uh, you know, once you get out there and you start mowing and everything else is uh, is going on. All right. Uh, we got uh, Thin Cut. He says, show that top dressing. Yeah, man. So you guys, you guys can see. I already already showed you guys. But for, I guess for anyone that is now in the live stream that just joined uh, after the fact, I can show you guys the uh, the top dressing. We can do it again. Why not? Right? We can do it one more time. So if you take a look here, this is uh, what the lawn what the lawn looks like. So it was only the back lawn that I got top dressed. It was only the back, and you can see it was relatively light. They had a few, 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 had a few up there uh, in that corner. It got a little bit heavier. And then over here in the swale area, like that area is also quite heavy. That's actually quite heavy. So I'm gonna, we'll see how that, that recovers, how the, the lawn grows back through that. But, um, but they, they did a pretty good job. They came out there super quick, got it done in a few hours. And uh, you know, I gotta say, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with, the, with the work they did. They did it much faster than I could have done it. Let's just put it that way. All right, did it much faster than than the way I did it. So just want to make sure, guys, is everything still coming through? Hopefully, think everything's still coming through on the live stream. Uh, good for you guys, and uh, just let me know if you guys are having any any issues. I, I tested this ahead of time, so it should work. But uh, but if we run into any issues, I can just transfer inside, and we can just keep the show rolling, right? Keep the show rolling. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, mixing it up, awesome. Yeah, man, I'm trying to. I'm trying to, Robert. Hopefully, you guys. You know, what I'm doing is I've got like a. Um, uh, I'm streaming this over wireless to the computer inside. It seems to be working pretty well, but again, if you guys see any issues, definitely just let me know in the comments in the chat, and I will um, I'll just transition inside because I don't want I don't want to degrade the quality of the stream over trying to do something something different and cool. But I'm glad you guys enjoyed the boy the boy the boy the boy the boy the boy the different maybe 20 minutes or so because the light's going away. But let's see. Next up, next up we have um, Cole Pillow. He's back. He says, "Here are my questions for leveling about 3,000 square feet." Spreading the mixture between a quarter and half an inch mostly. Um, some bigger spots are definitely there for next year. Yeah, so I uh, okay, so that's I guess that's that's the foundation. Where's the question? He says components sand. I've got two. Oh, here we go. Yeah, sand. I've got two choices. I have um, sandbox sand, very fine. Not a fan of that. We're probably gonna pass on that one. And it would be uh, soldered and, and the other one, 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 screen to two millimeter playground sand, brown in color. Uh yeah, so the the play sand, the really fine play sand, I'm not a fan of going with that one, Colt uh, Pilpow. Um, but so I would lean towards um, the Mason sand, two millimeter playground sand. That seems like a pretty large granule to me. That seems like a pretty. That seems that seems a, it's a bit on the large, on the large side uh, in in my book. Um, so I, I, of the three that you listed there, well, of the ones you showed. The, the the fine sand I would not go with, and I would lean towards the the uh, the mason, the mason sand. So if that's your question, that's uh, hopefully that helps. If not, let me know, and we can uh, we can always revisit it. Always revisit it, sir. All right. Next up is Chad Dolomite. He says, Hey Ron, I have a for Bermuda lawn in Florida, uh, full of bahia and weeds. What is the best product to get rid of the bahia and start taking my Bermuda lawn back? 
Okay, so well, Celsius is great for warm season grasses, except for Bahia. So if you want to spray your Bahia lawn with Celsius, that will that will go after it. That will damage it. Um, it'll it'll kill the Bahia and not damage your Bermuda. If you look on the label, literally, it's like Celsius is awesome for every every warm season grass type except the one you listed there. So if you have the Bermuda lawn and you want to keep the Bermuda and you want to get rid of the Bahia and a lot of uh, broadleaf weeds, then Celsius is your go-to, absolutely. So it depends on, on, on what the other weeds, you said Bahia and weeds, weeds could be a lot of different things. If it's broadleafs, then yes, uh, Celsius is gonna be a great option. If you're dealing with uh, sedges, uh, like Kalinga sedges, those types of uh, weeds, then, um, then you might wanna mix a little bit of Celsius, uh, certainty in there with it. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here really quick, Chad. So if you go to the golf course lawn store right here, which is where we're gonna go right now, uh, here, this is the product I'm talking about that will work, that will, will kill the Bahia. Make sure you use a factor with it. Um, and it's gonna, it's gonna eliminate a lot of the broadleaf weeds that you have in the lawn. And then if you have any of the sedges, like, um, again, like nut sedge, um, green sedge, uh, purple kalinga, any, any of the sedges, pretty much any of the sedges, uh, certainty will kill it. So. This guy and this guy together are a great combination for warm season grass. In my opinion, it's one of the best combinations that will treat the broadest, you know, the broadest variety of, uh, of weeds in warm season grass that you can also spray as temperatures go up. So it's a great option. Um, you can use, use a surfactant with it. And if you decide that you want to get Celsius and Certainty and a surfactant and you also need marker dye, we have a kit here that saves you a bunch of time. So all you get all four of these Celsius, Certainty, uh, the spreader sticker and the marker die all in this kit and it saves you a few dollars in the process so you have to sit there and add a bunch of things to your cart and it saves you a bit of money so something to consider and that that combination will get rid of uh, yeah, will target the Bahia while being safe for so hope that helps there are probably other herbicides out there that will uh, that will also target Bahia as well too but Celsius is a good one since you have Bermuda and given the hot uh, the, the hot temperatures we have right now you can also keep your Bermuda grass safe in the in the process, right? So, hope that helps. If you have anything else or need any other anything else, um, any other questions, uh, let me know, and I will do my best to help you out, sir. Do my best to help you out. Do my best to help you out. Um, all right. Uh, next up, next up. Let's see. Uh, we have. Next up, we have um, Mr. Um, Ryobi Seeker, I think. He says, um, I can't get, I can't find any company around Tampa, Florida that can do lawn leveling. If anyone knows, let me know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. So here's the thing. What have you been looking, how have you been looking, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Ray? If you get on, if you get into the, um, if you get into, you know, on Google and you simply type in top dressing or lawn leveling in Tampa, that should uh, bring up the person or, 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 or bring up services that can, uh, that can do it. You know what I mean? So it just depends on, um, on, I have a hard, with as many golf courses there are in Florida, I have a hard time believing there's no one that can do top dressing, you know, top dressing for you. So keep looking. And if worst case, what you could do is call a local golf course and ask them, ask them and say, not ask them to do it because they're not going to do it, but ask them if they know of any services in your area that offer lawn leveling or top dressing services. So something to, uh, to, to consider as, as well. All right. Next up is Taylor Johnson. Not a common question I get, but it's a good one. He says, how high can you cut with a real mower? It depends on the mower, uh, Taylor it really does depend. So uh, the true cut, I don't know, the true cut will go up, to, I think I want to say up to two inches. The true cut will go up pretty high. The greens master, like a greens mower, it will go, um, my Toro will go from a quarter of an inch up to one and a quarter inches. So 0.25 up to 1.25. Uh, so it depends on the mower. Here's the thing though. Um, real mowers really are not designed for cutting tall. Especially if you put a front roller on it, what you're gonna find is if, you, if you're cutting grass that's you know over two inches, really over an inch and a half, but over two inches for sure, you're gonna be, the, the, the front roller is gonna be mashing the grass down and you're not gonna get a good cut. So if you decide that you are going to use a real mower on taller grass, you know, there's something like the True Cut, which comes with caster wheels. Instead of having a front roller, it has two like, a, like you know, shopping cart wheels on the front. Use that, like something like that will work for cutting fescue or St. Augustine or, you know, a taller grass. And you'll still get a decent cut that way. But again, really, real mowers really shine. Like they're, they're, they do their best when you are cutting 
lower and cutting grasses that like to be cut uh, shorter. But again, like the, the, the manual push mowers, like the, the Scots, the Fiskers, all those will cut taller. And the thing with, that you find about those is that they don't have front rollers, right? They have pretty much the, the, the reel is, is presented, the reel and bed knife are presented right to the grass. So they do a decent job cutting. But again, if you're going with a powered reel mower, don't use a front roller on it. Use just caster wheels. That's going to get you a better a better cut than um, than if you if you try and use a roller on grass that's over two inches. It's just gonna just gonna mash it down. You have to make multiple passes to get it looking decent and, and that kind of thing. So, so just something to uh, to keep in mind. Something to keep in mind. All right. Uh, next up is Robbie Marie. Robbie Marie says, Hey Ron, what can I apply to help? New stolen, oh, it's new stolons, yeah. New stolen stick to the ground. The roots are not going down, and the ground is soft. Um, that's a good question. What can you apply to make the new stolons kick to the ground? To the ground, there's not a ton really. I, can, I got for you on that one, Robbie. I mean, if you can, if your lawn is really thick, you're going to have a problem with that because they need to get to the, be able to get to the soil to be able to tack down. So something you can do is if you can verticut the lawn or turf rake it, you do something to help thin it out. That will help the stolons tack down a bit easier. But if they're, but if your lawn is like super, super dense and super thick, the stolons just can't. I mean, they have to get to soil. You know what I mean? If your lawn is really thick, it's just not going to happen. There's not really a product that I'm aware of that you can apply that's going to really get around that. It's kind of a like it's a physics thing, right? 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 It's laying on the top of the canopy, and if you got to say your lawn is, I don't know, an inch, an inch, then when it's going, you know, when it's um, when it's trying to reach the, the soil, it can't because there's like an inch of grass in between there. So it, it might get down in the thatch and maybe can try to throw some roots that way. But the best bet would be to thin out the lawn a little bit. That's going to be uh, what I would recommend doing if you're trying to get the stolons to root in a bit better. That would be that would be my uh, my recommendation. That's what I would say to go with. All right. Next up, we got Marvin Love, not Marvin Hate, but Marvin Love. He says, good evening. Good evening, Marvin. Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. I really appreciate you. Um, oh, I see what's I see what's going on. This is whenever I switch to um, I see what's going on. Whenever I switch to to uh, to this scene, music is playing, so I can fix that. No problem. Uh, thanks for letting me know that, guys. I'm trying a few different things in the setup, so um, so uh, looks so I, I that, that should take care of it. Shouldn't happen now. So apologies. Apologies for that. I didn't disable the music in that in that scene. So that's why uh, that's how it was happening. So All right uh, Next up we have um, Robert Robert Marie. He's back. He says more context he says, I water every day those areas watering's not gonna do it Robbie really uh, if it's if if the stolons are resting on soil then they should tack down if they are resting on grass not so much It's not gonna it's not gonna happen. So I'm looking here to see if you have any other um, patch any any other comments or anything that you're, that you're saying, but um, but yeah, but my my best advice would be for you just to thin out the lawn a little bit. You know, turf rake it. Verticutting is probably the best, uh, but verticutting verticutters can be a little bit difficult to, to come by. But that would be the best out of the options as far as just thinning things out a bit, and that will help you know stimulate new growth. Any stones that don't that survive the verticutter should shouldn't have 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 after that. All right, uh, next up is Torres Green. I think Torres, I think you're new. If you are new, first of all, welcome, because I don't remember seeing your name before. He says, Ron, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here. He says, what are your thoughts on liquid aeration and dethatching? How effective are these options? So great question. So I, I think that the, that the liquid aeration, liquid dethatcher products, if you look at what's in them, they do provide some value. I don't necessarily think they are the best product for dethatching and for aerating a lawn. Like, in my opinion, again, people disagree, 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 disagree. Manual aeration. Nothing really beats getting out there and using a core aerator, using uh, like an airway, like they use to to um, to loosen up compaction in my lawn when they're doing the top dressing. Uh, getting out there with an actual, you know, doing like physical, 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 physical cores or um, or or physically removing debris and dead material. You see what I'm saying? So nothing really beats that. Uh, I think that though that those products, that the liquid aeration and dethatching products, can be used along with it. Like they they, they can work along with the uh, the the um, the manual aeration, the manual uh, dethatching. But I would not, in other words, if your lawn is highly compacted, I would not get out there and put down a, a liquid dethatching product and expect it to become like seriously like less compacted as a function of applying that product. You have to think about it, right? Like. Uh, if, it, if, if, the, if golf courses could get by with using a liquid product 
that would de that, that would decompact the lawn or decompact the the, the greens or the fairways and, and, and things along, and other you know approaches other parts of the course. They absolutely would do it because using an aerator. Uh, is it's more expensive. It's something else you got to maintain. So the reason why they use an actual piece of equipment is because it works, 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 because it works. That type of work, and, and to get it, frankly, to get the result faster. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those products. I, the, the one thing they are very good for is they do help to simulate microbial activity, which can help break down thatch over time. But it's nothing like physically getting the stuff out of your lawn. Now, the thing you get to realize too, though, um, Torres, is that you're comparing two things that aren't really equal, right? Because using a liquid product is relatively easy. Get like a, some of them will go down in a hose end sprayer. So it's, you know, an hour's worth of work and you're out there and you're done and it's relatively low effort. Versus getting an actual aerator, you got to, you know, find someone that can rent you one. So one of the big box stores or equipment rental place. So find one. You got to rent it, bring it home, get 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 home, in itself. And then take it back. So the level of effort is much higher, but the results are also much better, right? So you're not really comparing two things in my mind that are equal. Um, again, I don't think that the products are bad per se. I think that they, in many ways, they are a bit oversold for the results they can produce compared to a mechanical approach. So your choice, your call, but hopefully that helps give you some ideas. What I would do is just do both of them. You know what I mean? That's what I do. I do, um, I do a, I, uh, I aerate, and then I also use uh, Nutric Help, which is, uh, uh, you know, Nutric Help and also Biospectrum, which are both products, 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 break down thatch. So, so I would do both, but I would not only do a liquid product, thinking that your lawn is going to get de decompacted strictly from using that. All right, next up is Everett uh, Gilbert says. <coughs> Cough a little bit to the live stream, guys. I'm fighting a little bit of a cold, sore throat here, so you can probably hear it in my voice. Is can I power rake in August? Mm. You can, just don't do it aggressively. You know, if you do it the way I do it, uh, which is uh, power rake scarifying, I'm putting those two, I'm putting those two along the, in the same lines. If you're doing it lightly, um, Everett, where you are setting it to where you're not getting into the into the soil at all, to where you you know you maybe two to two to four millimeters above the surface, to where you're just literally just cleaning out any of that that easy to get out debris, then that's absolutely a great idea. That you can do like you literally could do that every time before you mow it if you had the time to do it. That's not going to be very aggressive on the lawn at all. Because I've tested it. I've tested for for two week for two week period. I I power raked before I mowed each time. Believe me, it was a ton of work, but the lawn still looked great afterwards. So as long as you're not doing it aggressively, you're gonna be fine. If you're not, if you're gonna go and set the thing to, you know, let's go down and, and cut a trench in the lawn, then yeah, that's, that's gonna be way too aggressive. It's gonna make a mess. And even given, in, if you did it in early August, the lawn should still recover, but you just don't need to. Like the, the, the idea behind doing those types of cultivations is a little bit and often. A little bit and often is what you're after. Not like trying to go super crazy aggressive you know, uh, especially when you're on the tail end of the, the growing season. So, uh, yes, but just do it carefully. Just do it carefully. All right, uh, let's see here. We got Mr. Killer Bees 82 says, uh, might be your pre-emergent, Robbie. That could be an option. Too. That's something else I was thinking about too. But it's, you know, Mr. Killer Bees, we're so far in the season. You know, it's, I, I thought, well, if he did pre-emergent in, you know, in, in February, March, it really, it really is not, it's not, it's not having much of an effect right now to where it's, it's, uh, it's causing like root clubbing. I did think about that, but I said, and eh, we're, you know, we're in late July, almost August. That's, that shouldn't be it, but that is something to also consider too. Robbie, if you did a pre-emergent application this summer, for whatever reason, that also can cause the, uh, the issues that you're, you're talking about, especially if you went heavy on the rate. If you were not, if you weren't careful on the rate, then, um, then that, you know, if you go, go heavy handed, that absolutely can cause the kind of problem that you are referring to. Can absolutely cause the kind of problem that you are referring to. All right, next up is PJ Harris. All right, uh, Harry 70, Henry, oh, P. Henry 76. Sorry, 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 sorry. I could put it on my big screen, so I'm sorry if I butcher, butcher your names a little bit. But P. Henry 76, hey Ron, recently found your channel. Awesome, I need all the help I can get. He says, my wife and I are really into making the lawn you know, a hobby. That's awesome. I like that. We plan on staying uh, in the next season as we are doing a lot of learning right now. Yeah, so that's the thing, uh, P. Henry. I'll, I'll tell you this. A couple of words of advice I, I would give anyone that's getting into their lawn. First of all, don't be intimidated. Everybody starts somewhere. Even if you don't know a bunch of stuff, there's tons of great resources on YouTube. I've got some really great content. There's other people that have some good content as well, too that you can follow. And just enjoy the process. I'd say that don't get too hung up 
looking at a lawn that looks pristine. Like a lot of times people look at my lawn, well, not right now. I mean, your lawn, you actually don't look like my, how my lawn looks right now, but when it's looking really good, right? And you can get hung up at it and say, look at it and say, well, um, you know, my lawn, I've been working at this for like a month or two months and my lawn doesn't look that great yet. Realize that it's a journey in that even when you get some parts of your lawn looking great, there's going to be parts of your lawn that are going to struggle. So just enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Uh, take your time. If there's any advice I could give you, I would say start with soil testing. You know, get a soil test done. That is going to allow you to, to figure out what type of fertilizer is the best type of product to, to use on your lawn, as well as any other amendments that you need. So I have an infographic here that I can show you. Hopefully the music won't play right now when I cut over. I think I solved that problem. That's we shall see. All right, as well as any other so if you, uh, if you look here, um, you go to the golf course lawn store, just go to shop, just click on shop. And in this, in here is a carefully prepared infographic. And it summarizes really easily, or, or in, in five steps, everything you need to know to get an awesome lawn. Step one is to find and eliminate weeds. If you have weeds in your lawn, figure out what they are, get a herbicide that is, that will target those weeds, those weeds, those weeds, those weeds, those weeds, those weeds. Weed. Step two, which is where you start to have fun, is get your soil test done. Get that done, and then fertilize your lawn based on your soil test results, okay? So, so fertilize your lawn based on the soil test results, and then it's just mowing. Step four is the most fun uh, part. Just mow, mow, and mow some more. When you think you've mowed enough, when you said, you know what? I mowed enough this week. Mow one more time, and then, then you've done it enough, and then you'll finally get the results where you're just going to enjoy it, right? So it's not that complicated. It really isn't. A soil test is going to allow you to, to know, um, to, to go after it for, with, with data, right? To go after it with a, from, without just kind of guessing and, and trying to figure out, um, you know, what, what to do versus uh, having actual, actual intelligence to know um, which, um, which, um, which, um, which, um, which, um, which, um, which. We have a set of soil test kits here um, from my soil. Those are the ones that I like to use. I don't have one out here. I have one inside, inside in the studio. I'll show you that if you want, but you can just go to the Golf Horse Lawn store and you'll see we have a bunch of different ones. If you're just starting out, you're going to want to get this Pro tool. So your choice is either to get like the Pro Pack, like one here on the right, which has two soil tests. So you can use one in the spring, one in the fall, my personal preference. Or you can just get the one, which is still better than doing none, and it comes with the with the Pro tool as well. So either one of these two is what I would say to start out with. And just enjoy it, man. It's going to be it's going to be a process. It's going to be work. But, uh, you know, you'll be surprised at in a, a season how much you can transform a lawn. It's from, you, can, you can take a lawn from zero to hero in just a few months if you're really you know, methodical about the process and, uh, and, and just consistent. You know, that's, that's a big thing. Consistency is hugely important to, to doing it. But happy to have you as a viewer. Glad you guys are deciding to take on, on the lawn. If I can help with anything, uh, definitely uh, let me know. Don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out and, uh, and let me know. All right, uh, let's see here. Higgy Pop says, uh, hey Ron, cool outside tonight. It's not bad. He says, hope no rain comes. Yeah, dude, so here's the thing. I, I'm trying to tempt fate, right? Because it was supposed to be raining right now. It's right now, it's it, at, at 2.30 in the afternoon, it was 80% rain um, from five to six, 70% um, from six to seven, and then 40 from seven to eight. We are in the seven to eight point uh, part, and uh, see? So I, I, I want to do the live stream outside just to start, just to give you guys a different change of, of, of scenery. But uh, also to see if I can, you know, you know, tempt Mother Nature to put some rain on the lawn. But uh, she's not biting. She's not biting. I'm just going to just keep watering it. Okay, he says, uh, I guess got to cut in between the showers here. And you got rain and coming? Oh, I'm so mad at you. He says, have a great weekend. So coming Georgia is only in 15 miles or so, 15 miles, 20 miles from where I am. And uh, you got rain and, just, and it just went right around us. We didn't get any of it. No rain here. Alex didn't get any. I didn't get any. Kind of stinks. And I really need it. It, 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 it. Yeah, that's all I'm asking for. Just one. But uh, it'll happen eventually. All right. Next up, uh, Robbie Marie says, also, what do the numbers indicate on the fertilizer bags? Great question. Okay, so we can go into that really quickly. This will be the last comment that I'll take before I go transition back to inside the studio because it's starting to get a little dark. But so let's go, let's take a look at one. So the, the three numbers on the bag are NPK. So it's, um, I'll just give you an example here so you can actually look at it. So we'll go, 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 lawn fertilizer. And then we'll pick, uh, we'll pick, let's pick, um, flagship. Why not? Okay. So on this one, the numbers on this bag are 24, 0, and 6. Okay. So that the first number is nitrogen, nitrogen content. The second number in the middle in this case, which is a zero, is the phosphorus. 
And then finally, the six on the bag is potassium. So uh, MPK, those are the macronutrients, the, 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 the nutrients that, are, that, your, that your grass needs in the largest quantities to do well. So that's why pretty much all fertilizers are going to list uh, list those on the bag. And any bag of fertilizer you go to, whether it be you know Home Depot or or you know Golf Horse Lawn Store, any fer bag of fertilizer, it's going to be the formulation is going to list what those numbers are. So as far as what they do, right? The um, nitrogen is the, the best way, the best uh, rhyme to remember it is up, down, and all around. So nitrogen helps with upgrowth or if this stuff you see growing above the surface of the soil. Uh, 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 phosphorus is helps with root development, and then potassium helps with everything. It really helps with water flow, with the movement of moisture uh, through through the through the plant. It does a bunch of other things. So you really need all three of them. Um, and the the ones you need in that you need to continually replenish um, in in a lawn are nitrogen and uh, potassium. Phosphorus doesn't go away nearly as quickly as the other two, which is why you'll see like a lot of fertilizers like uh, Humic Max, also like the Yard Mastery Ferts, you'll see number, zero, number. Because if your lawn already has, or your soil already has enough uh, potassium, I'm sorry, phosphorus in it, there's no, re to, there's no need to, uh, to add more, right? You just feed it the nitrogen and just feed it potassium and just, and, and you should be good to go. For the most part, you shouldn't need to continuously throw phosphorus uh, at, the, at, at the soil. So that's what the bags, um, what they mean. Also, what you'll find if you dig into the label a little bit more, you'll also see micronutrients being listed. So the, the flagship product also has um, your micronutrients. So your boron, copper, magnesium, zinc, iron, molybdenum. I think I got them all. I think that's all of them. So that's something also to consider when you look on the label, but those typically are not um, listed as prominently as the three numbers. It'll always be number, hyphen, number, and hyphen, number, and that's NPK. So nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Guys, we are 45 minutes in. I'm thinking it's time for us to transition to indoors because the lights are starting to go away here. It's gonna take me about 45 uh, seconds to a minute to move from here to inside. So for your viewing pleasure, I will let you guys take a look at the studio as it sits now. Uh, put some tunes on and you guys can uh, can do that while I um, while I, I, I move from outside to inside to inside the studio all righty Sometimes I need to let you know I need to let you know Oh, you know I need ya Maybe I can't keep a secret anymore mm, I know it ain't cool to say this I, I know it ain't cool to be like this But I just wanna let you know that you're my favorite I just wanna let you know that you're the one Say amen if you feel me. Ooh, say amen if you feel me. I just wanted you to know that you're amazing. I just wanted you to know, baby, everything. So say amen if you feel me. Ooh, cause you know you're my favorite. Ooh, I'm mad at you. Trying to focus, but you keep on passing by. Mm, look at you, you don't even have to try. I swear I'm telling the truth, because when I'm with you, I feel like I could fly. Mm, cool All right, guys, we are back. I will shut the music off and back in live. Hopefully, Hopefully you guys like the um, the uh, little outdoor work. So, all right, back to our normal our normal area. This is this is this is much more comfortable as far as as far as uh, sh streaming. All right. So next up we have um, Cold Pillow. He has a couple more uh, more questions and comments. He says, "So here's what I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking 50% sand." Uh, Two cubic yards, 25% uh, so topsoil, 25% compost, uh, four yards in total. Question, is that enough with some leftover for next year that I can store? 
which tan should I use? So here's the thing, um, Colt Pill, uh, Pill Pow. I mean, I would get, I would, I might just use what you're gonna, what you're gonna actually, I might get what you're gonna actually use this year because, I mean, unless you've got a big area or area of your lawn where you can store that much, um, that much sand, that much material, you know what I mean? That's, um, you know, I, I would get what you're actually gonna use this season. I guess what I'm trying to say. It's, it's, that's plenty for 3,000 square feet. I think is what you said. You should be absolutely good with that. But again, I don't know that I would, um, I don't know that I would necessarily store that much material for that, for that long. I, I would get what you're actually going to use up, you know, use up, uh, this, this, uh, this season. Okay. Let's see here. So Ben says it's, it's a uh, 9, 10 AM Saturday morning in Sydney, Ron. So you guys are a lot, a lot of hours ahead of us. Cool. Very cool, man. Well, hope you're having a great Saturday. Got Natalie Tran in the, in the live stream. What's going on, Natalie? Thanks for coming to hang out as always. Appreciate you. Appreciate having you here in, uh, in the live stream. All right. Next up is Mike Harvey. He says, what irrigation heads do you use? I have some spots where mine don't reach very well because they are on the perimeter of the yard. So the middle is iffy sometimes. So yeah. So as far as irrigation heads, um, Mike, I just have the, uh, the Hunter PGP, um, heads. They are the, the new ones. I think the new ones have, um, they have like blue nozzles that they're putting in them. So those are the the heads that I'm using on um, on my lawn. So in in my irrigation system, when I replace one, when I pre, when I replace, it, I just use whatever the newest PGP variant is. So so yeah, they're just 100 PGPs. Now the, the area is, as far as it not reaching far, uh, that very well all could also be um, that could that could also be a function of your um, of your pre, your water pressure. I have pretty good water pressure here. I think I'm like 70, just over 70 PSI, which is pretty high for residential water pressure. So, you know, the, the irrigation is able to throw, you know, throw relatively far and, and get pretty good coverage. But um, but the PGP heads are great heads. They're great sprinkler heads. That is what I would go with if you're um, you know, if you're if you're in the market for for replacing a set of heads. I'm sure Rainbird makes some good ones too, but the hunters are are, are really good. But it's also the water pressure you're dealing with or are you that you have available to you also is going to influence how, um, you know, how far, you know, you're, you're able to, to get to, you may have to put in another zone is what it sounds like, which is not fun because that's going to be kind of destructive. You know what I mean? You have to dig up, dig up the lawn, make a bit of a mess and all that, that fun jazz. So that's never, never fun. Never, never ever fun. All right. Next up is Taylor Johnson. He says, in the northern climates, is it okay to top dress with sand? Yes, yeah, it is, Taylor, but the time of year to do that isn't right now. The time of year when you're gonna to want to top dress if you're up north is really, if you have cool season grass, is really either the springtime or the fall. That is your time of year to uh, to consider top dressing. You really don't wanna do that, uh, you don't wanna do that right now. You know what I mean? So this fall, really into the middle of August, depending on where you are in the country, you can consider doing uh, a lawn leveling job with sand. But, uh, but right now it's still, still a bit warm, but yes, absolutely. It, it also depends too on what you're trying to achieve. So if you have a, um, you know, a rye grass or Kentucky bluegrass and your goal is to be able to cut it shorter, then yeah, then absolutely. Uh, in that case, going with, um, the top it makes a lot of sense. If you have like a, a, a tall lawn, like a fescue lawn, you can still do it, but it's not, there's not, um, in my opinion, not a ton of reason to. I guess the only advantage you'd say why you want to top dress a, a, a grass such that you're growing relatively tall is if you're, if people are out there playing on it and you have like small dips and you're worried about someone twisting an ankle or thing like that on it, that could be a reason. But most people that tend to top dress their lawn or level their lawn tend to do so when they're mowing shorter, if that makes sense. So, so really, it really depends on, uh, on that. But yes, to answer your question, yes, you can absolutely uh, level your lawn, top dress your lawn with sand, do it in the spring or the fall. That is the optimal time for doing that. Not, uh, not right now. It's a little bit, a little bit warm. Another two, three weeks, you can consider the window starting to open for you guys to, to get your lawn leveling work done. All right. Next up is Mr. G free. He says, Hey Ron, strap action gang. The rain keeps missing me. Recovery looking good. Yeah. The rain keeps missing me too. I'm, you know, G free. I'm right there with you, man. I'm the, you know, we have, uh, guys over there and coming, getting tons of rain and, it just sailed right on by. I think you just saw the house. It was like, oh, look, look at that. He just top dressed. He just got, he could really use some rain. We'll just go right around, make him suffer. So that's what I'm dealing with, but it, it'll, it'll, uh, I'll eventually get rain. And regardless, the Bermuda's growing through anyway. So it's not that big a deal. Bermuda will, uh, Bermuda finds a way. It finds a way. 
All right, next up is P. Henry. He's back with another question. He says, what is the best topsoil product that requires the least amount of sifting, or such that's easiest to sift when mixing with sand the top dress? Major pain in sifting mostly larger sticks and matter. Yeah, so I'm not where I'm not aware of where you are in the country, P. Henry. If you are in Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina, or North Carolina, I would just go out and just buy the product from Supersod. Like their stuff is already screened. It's it's great. It's a great product. You don't have to. You're not gonna have to screen it because it's already it's already screened um, leveling mix. Now, if that is not you, where you can't, you don't have access to that. You live some other part of the country. The advice I'd, I'd say is whenever you do it, try and get pro, get um get the the material as dry as possible. Because sifting sifting a heavier sifting a, a wet sand or a, a wet uh, topsoil is going to be more work. You're more likely to break your your screening your, your screener. And um, to just the only thing I could say is just dry. Dry is what you're after. The stuff you're going to find at the big box stores is not going to be the the best the best stuff. See if you can find like a garden store like um, I don't know, like a site one or Pike's Nursery. Anyone that has like that has like the like bulk um, topsoil, and ask them if they have any that's already screened or have any that's that's relatively clean. Let them know what you're trying to do, and they will they might be able to suggest something that's going to require not as much work for you to to be able to to uh, to to get ready for top dressing, you know what I mean? But regardless of where you get it from, the thing that's gonna, that's going to weigh very heavily into what kind of results you get and how much work it is, is that it's dry. So make sure it's dry uh, when you decide to go after it to, to do that work. So hope that helps, sir. If you have anything, other questions, let me know. And you are right, man. The one, it's one of the worst parts of using inexpensive top dressing material is um, that's not screened is all the sticks and twigs and other trash you got to get out of the, out of the, out of the blend, you know what I mean? So that's a lot of work. So you can avoid that by going with a good one. And actually I did put a link here for you for that, but I'll I'll um I'll put it in the chat here for you. So if you go to this link, it'll save you ten dollars off of a bag of super sod level mix right there. And again, that's the stuff I would use if you are in the Georgia area. I wouldn't even bother bother with anything else. The, the amount of time, the amount of month time it's gonna save you is well worth it. All right, next up is Mary. Mary says, hey, Ron, my friend. What's going on, Mary? Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you're getting those squats in and keep still doing all, doing the workouts. Because I uh, have one of those walking sprinklers that follow the hose and love it. I'm thinking of stringing a gang of three or four of them to cover a big lot. Have you ever tried this before? Um, I've not tried it, but here's something you might run into, Mary, is pressure, right? So let's say you're... Um, like the, the, the pressure is coming out of your garden hoses attached to the house isn't typically that high, right? So if you start dividing that pressure across three or four of these sprinkler heads that, that kind of walk and move, you might find that you don't have enough pressure to run all of them. So I might get one more and try it and see, but um, I, would be, I would be highly shocked. I'd be surprised if you're able to get uh, four of them off of a single hose and that you still get, you know, you get a good result. So one works well. I'm not surprised at that. Two, maybe, but three or four, I think that you're going to find that it's, you're not going to have enough pressure to, to run all of them. Because literally you're, you're cutting the, the pressure, you're dividing it in four, right? You're dividing it across four different outlets now at this point. So get one more if you want to try it. And if that works, I, again, that's about as probably as far as I would go. Three or four, I don't think is going to work very well. So hope that helps. If you have any other questions, uh, definitely, definitely let me know. Definitely let me know. All right, next up is Tutrilla. He says, happy Friday, everyone. And I'm loving the change of scenery. Nice, Tutrilla. So I'm going to work it out. I'm trying to get it a little bit better if we keep doing that. I got to work the transition. Hopefully the transition from outside to inside wasn't too long. You guys didn't hate it too much. You know what I mean? That it, it didn't, take, didn't take me too long. I actually had this to put up on the screen, but I forgot to put it up. So next time I do it, if I do it again, I'll remember to do that. So, uh, so yeah, but yeah, thanks, thanks for that. I appreciate it. It's, believe it or not, it was actually a lot of fun to make that all work and to be able to stream the content um, from outdoors, my camera out there to inside here, and it seemed to work fairly well. Hopefully, there weren't too many cutouts or uh, the quality looks still reasonably decent. I hope. All right, Mike Harvey says, since I just top dressed my lawn, do I need to reapply hydrotane? You can, uh, Mike. When I do in my top dress, I apply it as part of the process. So I didn't do it when the guys here were doing it because I, they didn't want me out on the lawn. They were like they were trying to get their work done, right? But um, if I were going to, if I'm top dressing a lawn from scratch and I'm doing it myself, 
what I tend to do is I will aerate and that's when all my other stuff goes down. So my, if I want to fertilize, my fertilizer goes down. If I have granular hydrotain, that's when I apply that too. If I have, um, you know, any, let me think what else would you want to apply? If you have any biosimilants like essential G, that's also the time to do that as well. You know what I mean? So, um, so to answer your question, yes, you can't, you, you shouldn't need to reply it unless it's a time frame for that. So if you did hydrotain, I don't know, three weeks ago, or a month ago, you probably should, you, you're likely still fine, but it's not going to hurt anything for you to reapply. You see what I'm saying? It's not like top dressing um, messes up hydrotain to where it doesn't work anymore, but it's a, it's a great time to, uh, to do an application. That's, that, that is when I tend to do it when I am top dressing the lawn myself. You know what I mean? I take that as an opportunity to, to get some more in the, uh, in the soil. All right, let's see here. Next up we have, um, P. Henry says, finally got my HB shipped out two days ago after, wait a minute, you got, you have a, got a honey badger? Nice, nice. Finally got my honey badger shipped out two days. I figured, I saw Sons of Liberty. I thought, no, some, some Sons of Liberty gun works. I, guess, I, know, I know it's a firearms manufacturer. I don't know if you're into firearms or not. Uh, two days uh, oh, after over a year since the order was placed, your Georgia, Washington um, um, art is pretty sweet. Uh, live, cure, die. Yeah, man. So this is funny. So what's funny about this is that a buddy of mine, you can kind of see it uh, here in this camera angle. A friend of mine that's an artist uh, that worked at a local range made two of those. He commissioned two of those. He did one that's at the range. It has like, um, you know, it has Q dealer on it. And this, the other, the only other one in existence is this one. So there's only two of them in existence. There's one at the range and there's one here. And then I believe he actually sold this graphic, this, uh, this print, this, uh, the rights to this to Q. So you might see it on a shirt. If they ever do a mystery shirt again, you might see this on a mystery shirt. But as far as like an actual canvas, there's, this is one of one, one of one of its type anyway. So very cool, man. You're going to, you're going to love it. I have, um, I have an, an SD. I have, I have an, uh, Honey Badger SD. You're going to love it. I'm not sure which one you got, but it's a, it's a great, great piece. You will really enjoy it. All right. Next up is Taylor Johnson. He says, how can you get the sod to match the existing lawn? I've had two trees removed over months ago and it looks out of place. Thanks. That's the thing, Taylor. Um, it's really, I'd say, here's the thing. If, if matching perfectly is your, the main thing you're concerned about, right? So you, the main thing you really want is it's got to match. Meaning that once this tree is gone, it's got to look the same. Then really what you, what you should have done, it's probably too late at this point, is instead of having them bring sod in, is to plug that area. Get like a pro plugger and transfer plugs like from your existing grass, parts of your lawn that's doing well, to this area that's bare where the trees were. Here's, here's what's going to happen though, right? It's going to look ugly. It's going to take longer. But then once the grass grows in, which it will, Bermuda will grow in. Once it does grow in, it will. You are guaranteed then that it's going to match. It's going to. It's going to because it's the same grass, right? When it comes to sod, if you have Tiff Tough and they're putting in and they're bringing in Tiffway 419 or they're bringing in whatever they could get for cheap to help do the repair. It's not going to match. Even among Bermuda types, there are variances, uh, slight variances in color. I experienced that in my lawn because I, when I a tree was taken out of the back lawn, my lawn was Tiffway 419 at the time. Now it's kind of a mutt lawn, right? But it was Tiffway 419 at the time. And the sod they brought in was supposed to be Tiffway 419, but it didn't match. It just, it didn't, it looked, it looked different to the rest of the, the rest of the rest of the grass. And there's even some common, Actually, some common Bermuda that that got introduced in that section um, there too, where they where that sod was was put in. So, um, if it's already in, there's not a ton you can do. There really isn't. Here's the thing I'll tell you this, though, Taylor, and it's a little bit of a consolation, is that I can promise you that probably you're going to be the only one that notices it. So, unless or, or unless someone like me comes by or some other lawn care person, like this, a lawn care geek comes by and looks at it and says, huh, there's two different types of sod there. Most people, 99.9% .9 of people are not gonna notice a difference. So mow it short, it's gonna look good. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine and it shouldn't, I mean, and it's not going to be a night and day difference, especially when the, when the season is in full swing. What you're gonna find is this, when the lawn goes into dormancy or comes out of dormancy, that's when you're gonna see it the most. You know what I mean? Because one of the grass types, one of either your existing lawn or the sod they're bringing in is either gonna go into dormancy sooner or it's going to come out of dormancy, or it's going to either go in sooner or go, or go in later, and, and that and that is going to you're going to see it's going to look splotchy. You're going to see the difference. You're going to see you're going to notice it then. But really, once you're well into the season, so between um, late April all the way through like late August, early September, you're not going to really be able to tell the difference too much. You know what I mean? Because because all the grass is going to be growing vigorously. You're going to be cutting it. It's not going to stand out as much as when it's going into dormancy or coming out of dormancy. So. Hope that helps us some consolation, but um, 
but I get it, man. It's a it's a thing. You're just not gonna be able to um um let me see here. There's someone that wants the honor of joining the naughty list, and I am happy to oblige you. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, but yeah, hope that helps, Taylor. If you need help with anything else, uh, let me let me know. But again, yeah, there's not there's not a ton on that one, man, unfortunately. And you're already in it. You're already in it. All right, next up is Junior86. He says, hey, Ron, I'm over in Austin, Texas, and I have a Bermuda lawn, and I'm dealing with some lawn fungus. Not fun, not fun. I'm trying to figure out if it's brown patch or dollar spot. I have pictures if you could help identify um, either. Email? Sure, you can send me an email. I will have to look at it after the show, um, Junior. But if you look, you send them here, ron at golfcourselawn.com. I'll get them. I'll take a look at it, and I'll be able to, to let you know what I think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look and let you know what I what I uh, what I think it is. Here's the thing: dollar spot and brown patch should look relatively different. I mean, even without seeing the pictures, brown patch you should notice like a ring. You should notice like a ring around the lawn, a brown patch or summer patch. You see like you'll see like a, a ring of dead or dying grass, and the grass in the middle of that ring normally looks okay. Dollar spot are, is is what it sounds like. You're gonna see like um little, like like little splotches that are kind of spread throughout the lawn in small little um little spots like dollar spot <laughs> best way to say it but it's like you just see little spots that are that are that are tend to be near each other that are in um one area there's not going to be a, a lot of uniformity to dollar spot whereas for brown patch or um summer patch or large patch you tend to see a ring you tend to see a ring and then the, the ring of dead grass or, or you know infected grass and the middle tends to be very green and looks good here's the thing Regardless of which one you have, if you have, well, here's the thing: if you have, if you have dollar spot, um, you're gonna want to use propiconazole to, to treat that. If you have brown patch, um, you can also use propiconazole, but really, azoxystrobin is is um, a great option as well too. If you want to be able to take care of both, so regardless of which it is, it doesn't really matter. Use this. Go with. I'll show you. Go with Headway. So if you go to the golf course lawn store, go to shop, go to fungicide and insecticide, and then scroll down here to the top shelf, Headway is a fungicide that contains both active ingredients. It contains both propiconazole and azoxystrobin. So it's one product that will take care of um, both lawn diseases you listed there. So whether you got dollar spot or you got brown patch, this, this bag, this one product will take care of it. You're good to go with either one. But hopefully just for me describing it, I'll let you know which one you think you have. Again, if it's a ring, summer patch, large patch, uh, brown patch, um, if it's like splotchy, um, almost looks like, like leprosy or something on the lawn. That's more indicative of dollar spot. Another thing to consider too is that dollar spot for the most part, if your lawn is healthy or your soil is healthy, meaning you have your Bermuda grass is getting enough uh, nitrogen, most Bermuda lawns that are, get, that are getting sufficient amounts of nitrogen tend to do fairly well with um, or just recovering from dollar spot um, without too much intervention. Yes, you can use propiconazole to, like, to arrest the spread, but you'll find it's, it, it tends to be more common in Bermuda lawns that are, are malnourished, don't, there aren't, that the soil doesn't have enough nitrogen in particular. But if you have enough nitrogen, dollar spot typically is not an issue. Brown patch, dollar, a large patch, if you got um, moisture, uh, a lot of heat, like those those types of conditions, like humid conditions like you would probably have in Austin, then that that's when summer patch, large patch, those tend to be um, more prevalent. So hopefully my description will help you know which one, which one you might have. Either way, Headway will take care of them. So... Hope that helps, sir. Let me know if you need anything else, and I will do my best to help you out. All right. Uh, Mary says, a heads up, Ron. You may not be able to fix it now, but your audio is skipping occasionally. Yep. Yeah, that, that was probably when I was outside, I would think. Uh, Mary, hopefully it's not skipping now. It should be skipping now. But it's something I'm, I'm, I'm working on. I'll, I'll have to work on that, you know, between this week and next week to try and uh, make that a bit a bit better. The capture card that I'm using for the, the stream that's outside isn't as good as this one or the one that you're seeing on the on the studio inside, which is why it's kind of not that great. So, um, but uh, but fair not, I will make it better. I will make it better. Since you guys seem to like it, I'll, uh, I'll continue to improve the process to where we get the quality outdoors to hopefully approach the quality indoors. We'll see. We shall see. All right, Todd Hickey's up next. He says, hey, Ron, I have patches of seed heads all summer. PGR helps. But what is causing them? Following your formula, real mowing every two days, treatments, watering, uh, TP419, Eastern North Carolina. So seed heads in most cases, Todd, are a stress response to the grass. So whenever, when you see a big 
a big flush of seed heads is whenever spring really gets here. So when, when we start transitioning away from cool weather into warmer weather, that is when you're going to start seeing seed heads be more of a problem in the lawn. If this time of year, you're still having a lot of seed heads in the lawn, I would get, if you've not gotten a soil test done, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that. I'd highly recommend doing it. Uh, the one I recommend is this one from my soil. They're really they're easy to use. Here's why, because da um, Dalvin Larry, I'm not sure if Dalvin in, is in here tonight, but Dalvin um, had the same issues as similar to you, right? He had seed heads all throughout the season, all the way into July. And I kept telling, starting in like June, I said, dude, if the, if the end of June, you still got seed heads in your lawn, they're all over the place. They're not, not getting better. There's not, it's not getting better with, um, you know, you're watering, you're um, applying, you're, you're mowing properly, you're using your growth regulator and you're just not getting any better, then let's start looking at this, at the soil, at the, at the nutrient levels in the soil. Because if, if your nutrient levels are low, that can also cause, um, can also cause seed heads. So, so it looks like you're doing a lot of the right things. So you're mowing, you got growth regulator. The only thing I would say, Todd, is you've not done a soil test this season yet. Do that and see if there's something going on with the soil. In Dalvin's case, he's not sure if he's in here now, but if in Dalvin's case, that was the, the thing that, that we that figured it out. Like he did a test and like literally all of his macros were low, every last one of them. So give that a shot. It sounds like you're doing the right thing. Your watering and everything else looks correct. So I would, I'm gonna start leaning towards um, perhaps a nutrient, a nutrient issue because Bermuda really, it really should only be a three week problem thereabouts in most, for most people. So with everything you're doing, it shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be a, a problem. Thanks Gus P, I think I fixed it. I saw what, um, I, I saw what's, what's going on. I don't think the music should be playing now. I'm monitoring it now. I'm gonna switch back and forth. I'm not hearing it. So something I'll, I'll, I'll fix between this week and next week. So. My apologies for that, guys. My apologies. All right. Uh, when you scope, when you switch to the website, uh, it's split screen. You're getting super loud background music. Um, it shouldn't be now. It shouldn't be now because there's not really anything. There's not any music, uh, any anything playing uh, right now, guys. So shouldn't be. But if if so, just let me know in the chat. Just um, just ping me, and I will um, I'll see if I can figure out what it what it is but uh but yeah i will um I'll, I'll work on it between this week and next week we'll get it figured out all right next up is eric leon he says uh not eric uh, jerry billings he says hey ron watching for the first time northern illinois very cool well thank you so much uh, jerry i appreciate it hopefully the show has been interesting i know we've had a few small technical glitches tonight i was trying some things outside which caused um um some some technical issues but normally the show runs smooth in that so apologies if that was kind of annoying but i appreciate having you as a viewer, glad that you're tuning in from um, Illinois. And uh, it's getting close, right? For you guys, I've got all you cool season grass folks, it should be should be getting to the point where you guys are gonna start going into your second season for the year. You guys get two, right? You get the spring and the fall, whereas we only get the spring. So great stuff. If I can help with anything, sir, definitely leave a question in the, the live stream and I'll do my best to help you out. I will do my best to help you out. All right, let's see here. Jason Greenlee says, happy Friday. Do you recommend a summer scalp prior to top dressing? If so, do you wait for the grass to green up again before applying the soil cubed compost? So um, a summer scalp, so thinning out the lawn before top dressing, yes, I am a fan of doing that. But it really depends on your height, the height that you're at, Jason. So if your lawn is at, mm, say, two inches, right? And you're planning the top dress it. I would not try and top dress a two inch lawn. It's, it's going to be way too much work for you. So if you're trying, if you can to take that two inch lawn down to uh, an inch, like that's going to be a, a, a fairly serious scalp. Uh, I would do that before top dressing. And as far as waiting for it to green up again, no, I really wouldn't wait. I mean, there's no, because you're not going to, if you're top dressing the way that I recommend doing it, you're not going to bury the grass in sand. What you're going to find is Applying that soil cube compost uh, is going to help it is going to help it green up that much sooner. It's going to pop. It's going to bounce back that much sooner. So uh, if the lawn is taller, yes, I absolutely would uh, scalp it or do something to thin it out prior to top dressing. In the case of my lawn, I didn't really change the height of cut, so I'm cutting at around 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.75 thereabouts, and I didn't change my height of cut at all when I when I was preparing for the top dress. What I did was I did verticut it. I verticut it twice. And I turf raked it, so I thinned it out, but I didn't change the height of cut because 0.75 is enough uh, for for top dressing. You don't need to go, you don't need to go uh, much lower than that to get a good result with top dressing. So, the answer, like most things, Jason, is it depends. It depends. 
if your grass if you're already happy with the height of cut that you're at and you intend to to stay there then you don't need to scalp it um but again i am a fan of this time of year thinning the lawn out a little bit it, it tends to do more be, do more good than bad and especially since you're going to be top dressing it anyway you don't really care about it looking a little bit ugly for a while because it's going to be covered in sand and and, uh, and soil anyway right so I would just don't go too, uh, you know, don't don't get don't get too crazy with it. So hope I hopefully I gave you some ideas and some um, some things to think about as far as uh, you know. If you go, don't go too aggressive. But I mean, again, it's it, thinning out before top dressing can be beneficial. Can be beneficial. All right, Mark Harvey says I know you've answered before on or for other people, but what leveling rig do you recommend? There's a couple. There's uh, the one from Standard Golf is a good one. It's not that it's a little bit less expensive. Also, the one from R and R products is also good. So either one of those two are the ones I would go with. R and R products is the one that I have. I bought it, I don't know, probably four years ago at this point. Whenever I started doing my own top dressing, so it's been it's, it's been several years. I've owned that rake. That one or the one from Standard Golf is also a good one too. So it just depends on uh, on which way on which one you want to go with. Either one of those are what I would go with. And, and I, I would say this: if you're going to get a leveling rake, get a good one, get a quality one because it's not something that you are going to replace anytime soon. Like you're gonna buy one and you're gonna, you're gonna have it for a long time. So get a good one um, because a bad one is just gonna be, it's gonna make make your life a lot harder when you're out there um, trying to to work in the lawn, you know? So if you want a link to the level, to the standard golf one, uh, Mike, I'll have it here in the chat for you uh, now. Let's see here, leveling, leveling rake. And then the standard, the R and R one, you just go to their website and just find it and buy it there. But that one you can get off of Amazon. The so the standard golf or the R and R products uh, rake are the ones that I would recommend. Those are those are both good. Uh, I've, I've I've recommended both to people. People have bought both of them and they have not had complaints about either one of those. You know what I mean? So a leveling rake is not something you want to to cheap out on because think about it. If it breaks on you, it's going to break on you while you're out top dressing. And imagine that that's going to be it's a terrible time for your leveling rake to go down. You know what I mean? All right, next up is Aaron Matlock. He says, eight days into my glyphosate app for a full renovation in the Pacific Northwest. And I planned for six weeks of prep before seeding. We have a heat wave now, but how much should I water to get stubborn plants to grow? Well, I mean, if you're doing, hang on, Garen. So if you're trying to do prep work to get ready to do your seeding, um, I'm trying to understand here. because So you're glyphosating, you're killing off the lawn, the existing lawn. So... Why would be why would you really worry about the grass growing too much right now? Because you're trying to if you're trying to kill it off to get it ready for seeding in a couple of weeks, um, I don't know. I would put a ton of water on it right now, trying to trying to get because you know, all it's going to do is cause weeds to come in or cause the grass that didn't die from the glyphosate application to try and come back. You know, so but if you're talking about something else, uh, which I don't think you are, then um, I mean, if you have other plants other than the grass, then you should water them based on you know, whatever, however much water that they, they need to do well. But if, if you're killing the, if I understand this correctly, if you're killing the lawn, getting ready for a renovation, I would not water grass that you're trying to get rid of. You know what I mean? I would, I would make life for it as hard as possible, especially giving it being, being in the Pacific Northwest, even with you guys having a heat wave, you guys probably still get a lot of water, a lot of rain compared to the Midwest and even like the, you know, the East coast, the Southwest, like Southeast United States, where I am, you guys should still probably get I imagine a fair amount of rainfall. So I would not put any additional water on grass that you're trying to kill. Assuming I understand your question correctly. If I, if I don't understand it, just ask again and I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll revisit it. But I, if I'm understanding correctly, then I would not water a lawn that I'm trying to get rid of. I really wouldn't. Okay, next up is Patrick uh, Schultz. He says, hey Ron, happy Friday. Happy Friday, Patrick. I have a question. Is a triple 12 fertilizer still considered a starter fertilizer? It's considered, it's the triple 12 is a it's not like it, any any balanced fertilizer but where the where the three numbers are the same so triple 12 triple 17 triple 19 um those are a lot of times they will call the people will call those starter fertilizers because they have an equal amount of all the nutrients right you've got your nitrogen your phosphorus and your potassium however it doesn't mean that you can't use them if your lawn calls for it for a good example like on alex's lawn like all three of his macros were low all three of his macros were low in his soil test at the beginning of the season. So he's literally using the triple 12 on his lawn all season long. That's what he's using that, because that's what the soil calls for. So, so triple 12 is the formulation. Starter fertilizer is like a label or branding. You know what I mean? But it's not like 
a triple twelve fertilizer is only used for is only useful for a lawn that you're trying to establish from scratch. You know, if you have a lawn that's um, if you have a lawn that 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 is been established, could be around for ten years, right? But you go out and you get a soil test done, and it says, "Hey, Patrick, based on your soil test results, your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are low. You need equal amounts of all those. Then a nice balanced fertilizer like the triple twelve would be a great fit." So. So yes, to answer your question, hopefully that helps answer your question. Any balanced fertilizer, any fertilizer where all three numbers are the same, a lot of times is labeled or marketed as a starter fertilizer, but that does not mean that it, that is all it's good for. If it's, you fertilize your lawn based on soil test results. So if, it, if your lawn needs equal amounts of all three macros, a triple 12 is a great option. Okay, next up is Sean Scott. He says, hey Ron, thanks again for your time. I've been so busy and now weeds are popping up everywhere. That's not good. Don't have time to order something. Uh, don't have so time to order something for tomorrow. Any recommendations from a local big box store? So, Sean, this question is very hard to answer without knowing what kind of grass you have and what kind of weeds you have. However, I will do my best. I will do my best. So, we shall go over to the Spectreside website. So, right here. Uh, so, this is what you'll be able to find at any of your big box stores at Home Depot, at Lowe's, at Wally World. Any of them should carry this product. Now. This is useful. This is good for Bermuda, zoysia. Um, it is good for some cool season grass as well. I think it's good for Kentucky bluegrass and ryegrass. You cannot put this one, the, the orange label, the orange bottle, you can't put the orange bottle on um, Centipede and don't put it on, on, uh, on St. Augustine either because it contains uh, quinclorac, it contains this. This ingredient, this herbicide, will kill, will da seriously damage and or kill your centipede or and or um, or St. Augustine lawns. It's really good against crabgrass, which you know St. Augustine sometimes gets labeled as. So there you go. But yeah, this is a good option. Read the label; it'll tell you where to use it. It'll say uh, where to use. It'll tell you what kinds of grasses. It'll say it's intended for KBG, ryegrass, fescue. Um, and for warm season grass, the almighty Bermuda, buffalo grass, and uh, zoysia grass. So those three. There you go, right? So you read the label and make sure that you're using it on on a grass type that's on the label. And if, and this is a good option. The one thing you're going to find with this product, um, uh, Sean, the one you're going to find with, with it is that it's, it's designed for homeowners. So the amount of active ingredient in it is on the low side. I mean, you got to figure, you know, Spectre side, I was, I'm sure they're assuming that people aren't going to read the label and they're going to go way too heavy. They're going to spray it, you know, what, you know they're gonna, the application is going to be off the charts. So they, they, the, the amount of active ingredients in the product are lower than it would be like a professional level concentration. So what you're going to find is you can apply it and then You'll probably get some results, but I, I would not be shocked if you have to go back and do another application, you know, uh, three weeks later. So if you did one beginning of August, you may have to do another application the third week or so of August to really get the weeds to be to be gone. As far as how to apply it properly, what you do not want to do is this. Let's say that our soil test kit is your lawn. Let's say right here in the middle are your weeds, right? So this is your weeds. This is the weeds in your lawn. We'll say the logo here are the weeds in the lawn, right? When you're using this on your hose and sprayer, you're gonna make one pass across it. You're just gonna wet the leaf of all of the of the of the, of the weeds. What you don't wanna do is this. If this is the weeds in the middle, you don't wanna go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Because what you did is you did one application, two, three, four, and the more times you go back and forth, you're essentially double, tripling the rate. And the likelihood of you damaging the grass, you're gonna kill the weed. You're absolutely gonna get the weed, but the likelihood of you damaging the grass also goes up. So Make sure you just make one pass over it. That's the proper way to apply herbicides. You don't need to go back and forth and, and drench an area or anything like that. And uh, then wait, just be patient. Give it two to three weeks, see what, what kind of results you're getting. If you, the weeds need another application, another follow-up, you can always go back in a couple of weeks and apply it again and it should look much, much better. So hope that helps. That's good. That's a good option for tomorrow to get you going. Um, and uh, yeah, it's exercise is a great, great product, especially in a pinch where you're saying, hey, I don't have time to order something off of the website. So hope that helps, sir. Next up is Jeff Kinter. He says, hey, Ron, your content is awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. He says, I am curious about using a plant growth regulator while my lawn is dormant here in Pennsylvania. Will it be harmful at all? Thank you again for your time. It is greatly appreciated. So uh, you, I would not apply plant growth regulator on grass that is not actively growing. I wouldn't. There's just no reason to because what do you... It's the idea is that it's trying to regulate growth, right? And the the grass isn't isn't actively growing, especially something like uh, like Primo. 
Primo Max, this is absorbed via leaf, via the foliar. So you really want the grass to be actively growing before you apply growth regulator to it. Now, given that you're in Pennsylvania, in about a month from now, your grass is going to be growing. It's going to be actually in a few weeks from now, it should start coming, start waking up. And in that case, yeah, once it starts, it starts really taking off, say mid September. Now, yeah, absolutely. Then is a great time to do Primo. But right now, you, I mean, you could do it, but you'd be wasting the product. You know what I mean? You're not, you're not going to get any results from it. And there's not, there's no reason to apply it to to a grass that is not actively growing. Is that that makes sense? You know what I mean? It, it it's designed for actively growing turf, not for uh, for dormant grass. So hope that helps. I mean, go ahead and get some. We have it here in the golf course lawn store. If you order it today or even early tomorrow morning before, say, 10 o'clock, it'll ship. It'll ship tomorrow. But, um, but yeah, I would just get it, get stocked up and just hang on to it until, you know, September-ish time frame. That's when I would start looking at doing growth rag on your cool season grass. And in the product description for Primo, there's a video that will show you how to mix it. Some also some tips as far as um, mixing it along with um, with like a like a liquid fertilizer that will help as well to prevent things like tip burn and some other other techniques that I can, that we can go into as well. But uh, but yeah, wait till September ish, whenever the grass is actively growing, before you start introducing any kind of growth regulator. So hope that helps, Jeff. I'm glad you appreciate the content and I appreciate having you as a viewer, sir. Thank you so much, James Finnegan. Um, is here. He says overseeding in about one month. Sounds like someone's got cool season grass. He says, is there a good sort of fertilizer with weed control? Notice some sort of fertilizers with triple 12. I thought they were more nitrogen phosphate, like a 20, 27, five. Okay. So here's the thing you're going to find James is that you have to be careful <laughs> because all, any of the, the, a lot, some of the starter fertilizers, some of the weed and feed products, the herbicide that's in them is not necessarily uh, going to be a, um, it's not, it's not really going to be a, a post-emergent. It'll have a, a pre-emergent in it, which is a bad thing. You don't want that if you are going to be seeding your lawn. So you got to be careful if you want to use a starter fertilizer or something like a triple 12 or, or like, again, so something like this. I'll show you something like uh, like the Yardmaster triple 12, which we carry this guy right here. Like this is a great starter for great balance fertilizer. Also has some micronutrients in it as well. And it's just a straight fertilizer. That is what I would use if you are planning to do see if you're planning to seed your lawn or overseed your lawn a month from now. It, and then if you're gonna if you want to control weeds between now and then, then use a a, a post-emergent herbicide that is safe for your grass type. So a good option, again, I'm assuming you have cool season grass as you said you're gonna be seeding in about a month from now. You're gonna want to use something like uh, for cool season grass, something like tenacity or triad. Either one of these will work, but this guy here. Anything we must try on. This will work well on a on a variety of weeds for for cool season lawns. So mix this along with some surfactant. That's going to give you the best effect, uh, and that is what I would do. So for me, I would use um, tenacity and a dedicated starter, a dedicated fertilizer that is strictly a fertilizer versus trying to play with any of these um, these weed and feed products. Because again, you can get some. That are that do have just a post emergent in it. They they do exist, but you got to read the label because a lot of them will say, uh, you know, feeds the lawn and keeps weeds away for like three months or for four months. If it says anything like that in the marketing or the branding of it, then it's got it's got pre emergent in it, and that is you're going to be working against yourself if you put that on your lawn and then you're going to try and seed. You know what I mean? So you could get the starter for it now. You get tenacity now. You could go after. You could spray apply tenacity to the lawn now and kill off any weeds you're trying to get rid of. And then you should be good, you know, in a month or a month from now to go ahead and do your overseeding project and you'd be good to go. But just be careful for any of the uh, the combination products. Make sure that the, the herbicide portion of it is strictly a post-emergent, that there's no pre-emergent in it. Because again, your big goal is to overseed. Next up is Archie Amos. He says, good evening, young man. Good evening, Archie. Ho hopefully you're doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to check in and, and say hi. I appreciate you as always. <clears throat> hopefully my voice isn't too annoying. I got a bit of a, a sore throat I'm finding here. He says, keep up, keep feeding us this great info. I will do my best, Archie. We'll do my best. Do my best. I, I really enjoy it. And I'm glad you guys enjoy hanging out as well. All right. CER says, uh, is it too early to aerate? I'm in Westchester, New York, and my lawn went sour. Bad. Again, it went sour. Bad. I'm trying to say it the way you're saying it. It went sour really bad. 
if um if I put fungicide lime insect control, but it is lost for the season. I wouldn't say it's lost for the season. I mean, you say it's. I mean, I just see pictures of it. I mean, it could be. It could be. But uh, I, it's it's rare to see a lawn that is so far gone, especially if it was good before CER, that it won't, you know, it won't come back. Because remember too, with you being in Westchester, New York, this time of year is the hard time for your grass. It's not the time of time of year for your grass to really be doing its thing, right? Really, it's spring is when it should look good, and the fall is when it should look good. Summertime, you're just trying to survive. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too quick to be, you know, to, to write the lawn off just yet. I would, uh, I would give it some time. It sounds like you're putting some stuff down. You got like some some insect control, lime and fungicide. And um, as far as aerating, I would wait until the grass is actually growing. You know what I mean? I would wait till September to aerate a cool season lawn. If you do it now, all you're doing is introducing stress into a grass that's already stressed. So right now your grass, is, your lawn doesn't look that great, right? Because it's summertime, it's hot. We're having a heat wave across the entire country, which is causing, you know, lawns, in gen especially cool season lawns to struggle. So let's not make that worse or introduce again, even more stress by going out and aerating the lawn on top of everything else that's, that's already going with. Wait till like September-ish timeframe when the lawn should be looking a lot better uh, to do your aeration then. So guys, we were an hour and a half into the live stream so far. And if you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently for me, I'd really appreciate it. I mean, I know we're just we're just getting started here or we're not, for us, we're just getting started, depending on how many more questions you guys have. But I really could use the support and it doesn't cost you guys anything. It's a great way to support the channel. Sends good vibes to the uh, to the algorithm. So please, if you wouldn't mind, hit that like button while you are sitting back and sipping on your beverage and watching us talk about lawn care, right? All right, du uh, Dwayne Hopkins says, Hey Ron, I put down my first application of Celsius. I use the higher rate as directed by the label to target Spurge. I am seeing some results, but... In some cases, I'm not seeing any changes. It's still too soon. I would give it some time. I would give it time, Dwayne. Uh, you'll apply Celsius and then walk away for 10 days. You come back and look in like 10 days, and you then you can see how it looks. I did a little experiment. I took some. I took. Uh, I had some some um some nut sedge in the lawn um, along the border. You guys never ever see because it it's, it's between my lawn and the neighbor's lawn. And I took some pictures of it. Do I have it here? I think I got it here. Oh yeah, look at this. So this picture was taken on July 20th, right? And I will, um, tomorrow, uh, on next week's live, what I'll do is I'll take a picture, I'll take some pictures tomorrow. I should have taken some before the live stream today. But this is what the nuts edge looked like um, on the 20th, right? It was nice and green, living his best life. And then today, it's yellowing, it's starting to look, it's trying to look pretty sickly, and it's, we are nine days since the day this, uh, that I applied um, certainty, I sprayed it with certainty. So, be patient. The good the thing with the good herbicides, right, is that the the stuff that doesn't kill your grass, that kills the weeds, that doesn't kill your grass, it ha it's going to work a little bit slower. You know what I mean? If you want something that's going to kill the grass, kill the weeds really quickly, you know, something you know, there's a trade-off with that. You get you get the weeds gone quicker, like you know, you may see results in 2 or 3 days, but the likelihood of you damaging the the lawn, that's the the, the plant that you want to keep is also a lot higher. So, Celsius certainty, a lot of those products which are very very good they work very well, are very effective against weeds. They tend to work a little bit slower. I and mean, when I say slower, I mean, you know, a week to 10 days you start seeing results. But the, the benefit of that is you're not gonna damage your lawn by using them versus, you know, some like something like Dismiss or Speed Zone, which is gonna, you'll see results a little quicker, but you're gonna have a yellow patch in the area that you also sprayed too. So it's just, it's always a trade-off, always a balancing act. So I, I would not look, if, you, if it's been 10 days, don't even bother looking at it. Look at it 10 days from now and then, and then you should start seeing some results. And even with more time, it should be even better. You said no water after application for two days. And, um, and in th oh yeah, three days since I applied it. Way too soon. Way, way too soon. Way too soon. Yeah. So if you're seeing results already in three days, be happy. You know, bra bravo for that. But it's, uh, but yeah, in this time next week, we have the live stream next week. Come join again and let, and we'll talk about it. And you'll see that the results are going to be much more pronounced than what you're seeing now. Like what you're seeing right now is just a tip of what you can expect to see in the next, over the next, course of the next seven days or so. So you'll, that'll be about that 10 day mark, like I said. So yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Don't look at it now. It's nothing to, uh, it's too soon, too soon. He says Bermuda uh, lawn in hundred degree uh, heat with irrigation. Yeah, Bermuda loves it though. That's, that's, that's something for Bermuda. It loves, um, it loves the, uh, the higher, the higher temperatures, those higher temperatures. All right. Archie Amos says, I made a mistake of using Lowe's Bermuda grass seed. 
uh, did not match. Yeah, it's, you probably got some common Bermuda in there and Lord knows what else. I then took about 50 plugs and integrated them with the Lowe's growth. The original is beginning to spread. Yeah, that's the thing. So I have a small little patch, a small area of common. It's probably eh, like, I mean, like I could judge it. It's probably 18 inches by 18 inches. So I'm, I'm thinking about, about either digging it up and just letting the existing grass spread into it. I'm also considering um, going after it with some glyphosate and um, another herbicide to just I'll obviously warden off that spot and burn, kill that spot off, burn it, like do a couple applications and then allow the grass to, the existing grass to fill in. I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go yet, but I do wanna get rid of it and it'll be a fun experiment. It'll be something fun to try. You guys know I'm never good, I'm never one to leave well enough alone on my lawn and plus you guys can make fun of me, right? Cause I'll have like a small little 18 inch section of my lawn that's absolutely dead. And it's the area that's out by the tree. It, it's in that, that patch of sod that was put in whenever the uh, the, the tree was replaced, you know, whenever the, sea, whenever the tree was taken out. So I've got a small little patch of common Bermuda there that I might, might, might go after, might go after. I'm, I'm trying to decide. What do you guys think? You guys think glyphosate or do you guys think dig it out? I think digging it out is going to be kind of a, a, a fool's errand. It's going to keep coming back. I think it's going to take a couple rounds of glyphosate and some other something else I'm thinking about mixing along with it to uh, to get rid of it. We'll see. All right, next up is Taylor Johnson. He says, thank you, good sir. I really appreciate it. You are very, very welcome. Taylor, I appreciate you hanging out in the live stream and asking great questions to keep it rolling. Should be a, it's a quiet night tonight, guys. It seems like a lot of people are out, out and about tonight. We don't have that many people in the uh, in the stream tonight. Might be a short night tonight. All right, next up is um, James Finnegan. <coughs> he says, thanks for all the info, Ron. I have a lawn that is coming off of a fungus, off of lawn disease, okay. It also has some different types of grass. Using same seed as last fall, this fall, okay? How many seasons before my lawn looks uniform? It's hard to say, man. It may never look uniform. The, the way to the way to make it look to be, for it to be uniform, James, if you want it to be, to, to be certain it's gonna be uniform, is to burn down the existing lawn. It's to do a renovation, like kill the existing lawn and put down either a, a single type of sod or a single type of seed and that gives you the best chance. But if you've got different types of grass mixed in there, you know, the whole thing of like one grass spreading and taking over another grass, it can happen, but there's but there's no way to know. It could it could be a season, it could be five seasons before it happens. And it depends on the kind of grass you're dealing with as well, uh, kind of grass you're just trying to deal with as well too, right? So you didn't say, but it's um, it's not, it is not something that I could tell you that within a, one growing season, that the grasses are all gonna integrate and it's all gonna look the same. I will tell you in my lawn, right, where it's Tiffway 419 and Arden, like throughout the growing season, you really can't tell the difference between them. I mean, they 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 looks, it looks, the lawn look, or for all, for, for all intents and purposes, the lawn looks relatively even. When you go to the fall time or early spring, that is when you're able to see the slight differences. So it, it is getting more and more integrated, like the grasses are spreading and they're becoming, it's becoming more of a mutt lawn, but it's been several seasons of that, right? So it's it's impossible to tell you how long it's gonna take for it to look uniform. If it's really bugging you that much and you don't mind like, making it look really, really ugly for a period of time, a renovation is one way you can you can be pretty much be guaranteed that you can make it even, but that's a more extreme approach to, to, to getting what you're after, you know what I mean? So, hope that helps, sir. If you um, if you have any other questions, let me know, but it's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough one. Okay. Let's see, uh, Michael C says, uh, hey Ron, good day, sir. Could you explain a little about what to look for between disease and heat stress, thanks. Oh, disease and heat stress. Well, if it's if it's heat stress, um, what you'll tend to find is that the, it's, it tends to be, heat stress tends to be a bit more gradual, right? So if you'll see a lawn that, that, that was normally green looking great, and what you'll find is, is, is it begins, as it begins to dry out more and more and more, it'll, it'll, it'll slowly transition from being green to lighter, lighter and lighter, and, and if it gets if it gets really bad, it'll actually go slightly dormant, right? Whereas a fungus um, or lawn disease, something like brown patch or dollar spot, is going to set on a lot faster. And with any of the like, especially large patch or, or, or um, large patch or brown patch, you tend to see you tend to see a ring. You'll find like a ring that the, that is dead, and the grass inside of it will be green. If you guys want to see what I'm talking about. Like, um, there's a video that I did earlier this year on The Neighbor where we talked about fungicides. And uh, in that video, you'll see you'll see tons of, you see some spring dead spot, you'll see some large patch, you'll see a bit of everything in there. And, and they look different, they, 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 they do look different. If it's a gradual fall off, right? 
it was a gradual fall off and um, to where it looks like the lawn is almost sort of beginning to go dormant, but there's no real hot spots of like, like death and destruction is what I'm trying to say, then that's more than likely heat stress. If it's, if it's uh, lawn disease is, is a lot more, is much, much more aggressive. I'm trying to find this, um, this fungicide video to show you guys um, what to, uh, what to look for. There we go. Yep. Here we go. So this video here, this link, uh, the thumbnail will, will show you, but, uh, but here you go. Michael C. If you take a look at, at this video, you'll see what to, um, what to look for, um, as far like the difference between heat stress and, and, uh, fungus, lawn fungus. So take a look at that video and that will, uh, will show you a difference. But again, the heat stress tends to be more gradual, a lawn disease sets on a lot faster and there tends to be a bit of um, a bit of uniform, like at least for like large patch anyway, it tends to be a bit of uniformity to it. You'll find like rings that'll begin appearing in the lawn. Like that, that's a, that's a telltale sign of disease. Or if you have like pythium, you'll find like, um, or, or root rot from um, that. That's a situation where you'll start seeing like uh, the, the, the grass starts looking like red, like a uh, deep, like deep brown, almost like copper reddish color. Like that's a, a telltale sign of lawn disease. Like that and heat stress look completely different. Heat stress really just looks like the lawn is losing its color and it's beginning to get yellow, like just beginning to get yellow compared to how it used to look over time. But it's a more gradual thing versus, uh, again, disease tends to set on a lot, a lot faster. So I hope that helps, uh, Michael. Uh, if you have any other questions, let me know. But also check out that video that I just posted in the, um, in the chat. Cause that will show you because I'm literally in that video I'm sitting right next to a big um, a big uh, 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 next to some lawn damage from disease that you can you can see you'll be able to see the difference and also last year I had a video where I had some lawn damage in my lawn as well that will also show you the difference between uh, that again it looks nothing like heat stress like disease looks nothing like heat stress all right uh, Patrick says uh, thanks that helps a lot you're very very welcome Patrick no worries at all happy to help out I'm glad it was useful and he says, clarification, Aaron Matlock. Aaron's back. He says, clarification, lawn is a mix of so much junk grass types, and I don't want stubborn types that aren't dying yet to survive. Not sure how much water will let those uh, show their ugly heads. Okay, so the lawn was a mix of junk grass types, and you don't want the stubborn types that aren't dying yet to survive. So then again, uh, I don't, I mean, I, I, again, Aaron, so... I guess why water? I'm so I still go back to this, it's the same thing. So you have you have, your lawn is a mix of junk grass. You are doing a renovation, so you're you're killing off the entire lawn. You're right. There are some maybe some spots that are more stubborn that haven't died off yet. But why introduce something that the grass that's only going to help the grass help the existing grass grow? Right? Water like grass needs water, and if you're trying to get rid of it in preparation for a seeding project or a sod project, then I wouldn't add water. I wouldn't water it. I wouldn't water something I'm trying to get rid of. You know what I mean? So again, maybe I'm not explain, understanding it right, but if, I, if I'm reading this correctly, and I think I am, then I would not water a lawn that you're trying to get rid of. So, okay. You says weeds. Uh, I, weeds, I can, I can, I've had great success controlling moss. That's another story. So it's just stubborn grass types. I want gone before applying seed. Yeah. So if you're trying to kill off the lawn, if you're trying to look like not selectively, you're just trying to wholesale kill the lawn off get any kind of a grass killer. So like something like um, a product that has gly glyphosate in it, even Spectracide has a grass and weed killer. So I'll show you here. You should be able to get this at your big box store if you're looking for something. Uh, let's see, weed and grass killer. So you see this one that has all the nice colors. These are the ones you want to avoid if you're not, if you are trying, if you don't want to kill your lawn altogether. These guys are non-selective. They will kill both your grass and anything else. It'll kill your grass and it'll kill weeds. So let's see what the uh, active ingredient is. Yes, you got Fusopop, Dicamba, Diaquat. Yeah, Diaquat is gonna, we'll just simply, we'll smoke, we'll, we'll absolutely smoke. Um, it'll burn up, burn up the, burn up the leaf. We'll burn the leaf up. But yeah, this is a, this is a good, as far as uh, a non-selective, again, keyword non-selective, this will kill everything. Do not, do not spray this if you're trying to keep your lawn, uh, keep grass. But this is, um, this is an option too. They have a concentrate. They've got a couple different versions here. They got a hose end sprayer version of it. So, uh, so yeah, I wouldn't water Aaron. I would use something like that to get rid of the grass and the weeds in the area of the lawn that you're planning to seed at some point. So hope that helps, sir. 
Okay, Thincut says, hey Ron, how long after applying FERT, Carbon Pro G, and insecticide can I do a soil test? So the only of those three things you listed, the sorry, the only one that really matters is fertilizer. So Carbon Pro G, not gonna really affect your soil test results, and insecticide also not gonna affect your soil test results. So for the fertilizer, I would give it uh, four weeks. Four weeks is what I would aim for. Longer is better, but four weeks is uh, is what I would say is the amount of time I want to give before your last uh, like your last fertilizer application before I start pulling cores uh, to send a soil test result off. So if you applied fertilizer, say, the beginning of July, like a granular at the beginning of July, then the time to do your soil test results would be this weekend if you've applied nothing else in between now and then, if that helps. So, But again, Carbon Pro-G and insecticide uh, shouldn't really matter, shouldn't influence your soil test results at all. It's only the fertilizer that has the potential to do so. Okay, uh, that uh, crazy lawn guy says, uh, you're helping many people, currently working to restore two lawns using everything I've learned from you. Well, I'm glad to hear that, that crazy lawn guy. Glad to hear that the content's useful and that you guys are watching it. And uh, I, I really appreciate the uh, the support. Always, you know, always fun, fun to hear that all the hard work that goes into the videos and the contents and the live stream has a little bit of effect on helping you guys get your lawn just a bit, just a bit better. So awesome stuff. Thank you for letting me know. All right, uh, Chedion, Ch uh, Kedion's, uh, Kedon's, or Ke Chedon's, Chedon's, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, says, hit the like button, everyone. Let's keep this channel going for sure. All right, yeah, I appreciate that, Chedon's. Definitely hit the like button. I'm gonna take a sip of water while I um, while I wait for something or for you, for you guys to do that because I am thirsty. Oh, it's something when you have a sore throat, water taste is absolute best when your throat's all messed up. You know what I mean? All right, Gus P. Music says, have you ever allowed a patch of your lawn to go seed? I don't understand the question, Gus. Have you ever allowed a patch of your lawn to go to seed? Um, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the, what the question is, uh, Gus P. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if you can explain it, I'll, um, is, oh, for harvesting reasons. No, because here's the thing you got to realize, Gus, most most of the grass seeds that, uh, like Bermuda grass seed anyway, is sterile. So most of the, the the seed heads that you, especially for hybrid Bermuda anyway, the seed heads are sterile. So even though you see the seeds, the, the, the seed heads are popping up, they're not, they're not going to, they're not going to reproduce. They're not, they're sterile seeds. So, um, so no, it's not something for you to, to, to um, I've not done that because it's, it, they're not going to have the effect that you're thinking that they, they might have. All right, guys, we got a super chat. The first super chat of the evening. I appreciate that, LG. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it for the love and support, man. Thank you. Super chat received. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Just wanted to hear the super chat received in that creepy robotic voice. You know what? Because it's you, I'll play it twice. Super chat received. There you go. See, it's creepy. Is it creepy and robotic? I may have to change it. I don't want it to be creepy for you, man. You know? I mean, I don't want to keep you out too much. All right. Uh, Kay Ward says, I am in the house. You are in the house, Kay Ward. Hopefully you're doing all right, sir. And then next up is uh, Mauricio Salinas. And while I'm talk pulling up Mauricio's comment, I need to fix the show sponsor, who right now is Mr. LG. LG is the sponsor of the show. So there you go, LG. Your name in lights. How's that? Boom. There we go. All right. Mauricio Salinas is up next. He says, how soon after seeding can I use pre-emergent? I use my remaining two pounds of R15 to help some weak spots, and I'm starting to get bothered by weeds over on the lawn. I have certainty extra. Okay, so Mauricio, what I would do is this. I would not use, uh, this this time of the, of the year, this time of the season, I wouldn't bother with pre-emergent. I would wait until September timeframe to consider, or late September really, to consider doing a pre-emergent app on your lawn. As far as taking care of weeds in your lawn now, post-emergent is what you want. So the certainty product that you have, like the certainty extra, that's a great product. That should do a good job against most <clears throat> against most weeds in your lawn, most most uh, you know most broadleaf weeds anyway, and and some sedges. So that's the thing with their with their uh, the extra product. It's got some sedge control in there as well too. So that in itself should do a lot of the a lot of the heavy lifting. And you can you can spray that. You know what I mean? You just did your seeding, put the seed down. You know, it's because that product is is foliar absorbed. You can you can apply that now if you want and get rid of the weeds while not negatively influencing 
the uh, Arden 15, the grass seeds you're trying to grow in. You know what I mean? Uh, Pre-emergent, again, it's just, you could, I wouldn't do it now. I would wait till, till September timeframe. So you could do your fall pre-emergent app because that way you're just going to control, you have a better chance of preventing and controlling the cool season weeds are going to start trying to germinate in uh, October timeframe. So you got Celsius Extra, use it. Mix some surfactant along with that, and that should that should knock out the majority of weeds you have in your lawn. The only weed that you may have to get something different for is if you have mature crabgrass, quinclorac is a better choice for that instead of the uh, the Celsius Extra. But that, if you got that, go with that, man. It's good. It's a good product. It's a good product. It's not as good as Celsius Certainty, but it is good for like a just a one product. All right. Next up is Richard Armstrong the second. He says, "Hey, Ron." I have super deep grooves in my lawn, three to four inches in some places. Bad grading before I did new sod this summer. Is it possible to level a mess like that out? Yes, it is. It is, Richard. You can, absolutely can. Um, just realize that it's going to take the grass a while to, to grow through that. If you, if you said to go all in one go, here's what I would do. Especially since you said it's just grooves. It's not like a big area of the lawn. It's like small, like small grooves. What I would do is if you want to you want to put down like um you know your topsoil or fill or fill dirt whatever you're going to be using to build that up like put that down and then pack it down so put it down and like walk on it or stamp on it trying to get it to settle and do a couple of rounds of that to try and build that up and then you can top dress the uh the entire lawn if you if you want and be good with it. But you said you have uh you have new sod new sod you did new sod this summer. Yeah, I mean, you, you could absolutely fix it, is what I'm trying to say. Just the areas that are that have the ruts, you'll have to fill those ruts in, and then um, then you can just top dress the entire thing, and over time, it'll, it will look a lot better. So yes, you absolutely can do that. You can, you can fix it. The one thing I would say, though, is the thing that I told you about packing it down is important, because what will, what will happen is if you take like three, you know, three inches of like fill dirt or top dressing material, and you, just, and you just throw it, and you just lightly just apply it to that area, and you don't pack it down, it's going to settle. And then your three inch rut is going to become like a two and a half inch rut. You know what I mean? So you want to, you want to make sure you put it there and then pack it down and maybe do a couple of rounds of that to make sure it's really, you're really filling in that area and then top dress the entire thing. And then once the grass grows, that's surrounding the, the ruts, the grooves grows through and spreads in, it should look a lot better. So it's just a process. It'll take some time, but the big thing is just to get get the 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 grade or the ground you know smoothed out as much as possible as much as you can. So, I hope that helps. It sounds like you have. I'm assuming Bermuda because you did the sod in the middle of summertime. So I'm assuming it's Bermuda. So if you did that, it's gonna you know Bermuda won't take long to begin filling in that uh, those those groove areas where you you had to go a little bit heavier. So. Hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, let me know. And I appreciate you watching the uh, the live stream. Thanks for coming to hang out. James Finnegan is up next. He says, hey, Ron, I have cool season lawn. Also in Westchester, New York. I had a soil test in the spring. It recommended 1776. I put that down. Uh, do I use that in the summer too or go to go away from nitrogen-based uh, fertilizer? So for a cool season lawn, in the springtime, you can still feed it, but you want to back off how you want to lower the rate. So I think if, you, if it's the 1776, which I think is the yard mastery product, they recommend applying that at three pounds per thousand. What you might do is, well, let me see, how much how much nitrogen is that? Uh, let's see, three times point one. That is, yeah, it's half a pound of nitrogen. So it's enough, right? So if you want to back that down to say two pounds of nitrogen during the summer months, so just reduce the amount of nitrogen you're putting into the lawn, uh, that's fine. And then when spring, when fall rolls around, which is going to be here, you know, I don't, your grass is going to start growing again aggressively in another month or so, then you can go back to your normal rate of three pounds per thousand. So the rate that, that was producing great results in the spring, you can also use that, that, that same rate in the fall. But during the summer, when, the, when your grass is stressed and really it's not trying to grow, it's just really trying, trying, you know, you're, not, you're not really trying to push a lot of growth, I would just back the rate down slightly. I wouldn't, I would still feed it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't fertilize it using the same rates that I would fertilize um, in the spring or the fall. Much like Bermuda, I would fertilize. I would not fertilize Bermuda in October the way the same way that I would fertilize it in May. You see what I mean? Because it's different times of year. The, the 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 time or how aggressively it's growing is completely different, and the grass is about to go into dormancy. So there's not reason to push a bunch of growth when it's just trying to go to sleep. So. I, I would not move away from nitrogen-based fertilizer. You could still use that one, just lower the rate. Just, just back the rate down a little bit is all, is all I would say to do, James. 
Papa Mo's Lowe's says, hey, Ron, the Alex Sterling is arriving in a few weeks. We're going to clap it up for that. We're going to do it. You'll get one of those, one of these bad mama jammas right here, like that. Pretty awesome. Yep, he's gonna get he's gonna get one of those. He says, "What depth do you recommend for the Scarifier and the Verticutter? Scarifier and the Verticutter. What depth? Also, how often of each? How often of each? Or does it depend on the lawn? Okay, yes. So, uh, for the Scarifier and Verticutter, to start out, don't go too aggressive. Set the Verticutter, the cultivation depth at four millimeters to start. Four millimeters above the surface. Okay, so not below, but above the surface. Set it at four millimeters." And um, that's good. That's a nice, for the first time, it's a nice light. Um, it's not too aggressive. And you're going to find a lot, especially the turf rate, a lot of debris is going to come out even at four millimeters. Just do that and do that and do that. And when you find that less and less debris is coming out, then you can drop it down to two millimeters. And that's pretty much where I would leave it. You know, I would leave it. I mean, if you want to just one time go to zero and get to the soil, you can. But I, two millimeters is going to be is going to be just fine. So I would start at four, so you're not too aggressive um, um, right off the, the jump, but then uh, work your way down to two mil, and then, two, and again, I say two mil, I mean two mil above the surface of the soil. Two mil above the surface of the soil. And then, um, and as far as, uh, as far as frequency, when it comes to the verticutter monthly, you can do that monthly, and the scarifier whenever you have time to do it. Turf raking, you can do that as, as often as you want. So if you wanted to, eventually once you get all the debris cleaned out, you'll be able to get down to the point where you're turf raking once per week, and then verticutting monthly. But it, when you initially start, you can do it as much as you as much as much you have time to do it. You know what I mean? If you want to do it before every time you mow, that's going to be just fine. You know what I mean? When I, when I first got the uh, C27, I just turf raking, turf raking like, like there was no tomorrow. I turf raked. Um, I, when I first got it, I did like turf in a bunch of different, uh, uh, turf it twice in one, in one direction, turf it twice in another direction, verticut it one, uh, once in this direction and verticut it in the other direction. So I, I was, I was very, again, it was not, um, I was not going super aggressive, but I made a lot of passes to really help clean, uh, debris out. So the, the big thing pop on was low is a little bit and often. So not aggressive, but do it often. And you're going to get good results, uh, by, uh, by doing that. So with you getting it a couple of weeks, you still got time to do a verticut and then uh, and to still to scarify to divert to uh, to turf rake. And again, just don't, don't go too aggressive. You're gonna like the way the lawn looks. I, I will tell you the stripes. The, once you decide how you want your stripes to look, the stripe action once you begin using the outlet system is like it's like nothing else. Granted, I mean it, it, my lawn doesn't look like it right now, but take my word for it. It makes it, the stripes are as good as they uh, as they've ever been um, ever since I started using that mower and their way of doing it. So it looks like, kinda like, this isn't even a, a great video, but this, but you can you can see those stripes. I mean, even if you don't like Bermuda, you gotta admit, man, those stripes are on point. Those are fire. Those are fire, they're pretty good. Pretty good stripes. Um, but yeah, and congrats on the mower, sir. And if I give you a clap it up, we're gonna clap it up again anyway, just because we can. Uh, you're gonna like it, it's a really very nice unit. Take pictures once you get it, man. Let us let us uh, let us see your new hardware. Okay, next is Aaron Matlock. He says, "I'm just worried." Uh, he's thanks. I'm just worried about this seven day heat wave with no rain causing dormancy, rather than the glyphosate killing those stubborn types. Uh, I mean, I I guess, but it's I mean, no, I mean, you, if you want to put a light amount of water on it, Aaron, you can. But I wouldn't be out there watering the lawn normally like you normally do. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, I I, I think the glyphosate is going to do what it's going to do, regardless. I don't think you watering or not watering is going to make is going to you know majorly impact the results uh, that you get. But if you want to do a light watering, you can. I personally wouldn't, but it's it's completely your uh, your call. Your call. Uh, Thin Cut says, "Thank you, Ron. That is what I was thinking. I will do a soil test for me and my neighbor. I talked him into getting a test from you. Awesome. I thank you so much. I appreciate the support, Thin Cut. And then when you get the soil test results." do you know fertilize or feed the lawn based on those soil test results and you're going to find that you know you'll be able to check that box off and you'll be one step closer to getting the lawn that you're after all right uh thomas Han Han hanan says why is it said that once you use sand to level a lawn you can never use soil again to level thanks i don't know where that came from or why or why that is even said Thomas, because I, I've done a mixture of both. I know people that have done a mixture of both. Not just me, not just Alex and me, but I know people that have done different variations of sand, soil, um, sand just 100% by itself, soil, but they're just top dressing, blends of sand and soil. 
and it's been just it's been just fine. That might be something more for um, I don't know. For, I know for greens, all they use on greens is just sand. They don't use any kind of blends. But as far as as why people say that once you use sand, you can't go back to soil, I don't I don't know. I mean, I guess I could say this: like the the sand is really for structure. So if you went sand a top dress with sand, and then you use a top dress with just 100% soil, don't know why you would do that. But if you decided you were going to do that, the soil is not going to really do a whole lot for you a year down the road. So you you know you you might be able to even the line out a little bit for um that for that season but it's going to begin to break down and you're going to be right back to where you were with the sand. So what, what I would say to do, Thomas, is to do a blend. I always, I'm always a huge fan of blends. Do a, a 70-30 blend, 50-50 blend, whatever you can get your hands on, because then you're adding both structure and you're also feeding the soil at the same time. But as far as you saying you can never use soil again, I've done both and it's my lawn, my lawn looks great, man. So and I, I know, and not just me, I know other people that have done different blends and it's still, it's still fine. So I don't know where that comes from and there might be actually some truth to it. There, there might be under some sort of scenarios or it might be some truth to that, but I don't know uh, what those might be. So something for me to look into and maybe get an answer for, and get an answer for you guys, but I don't know off the top of my head why people say that or why some people say that anyway. Okay. We got a few more super chats. We got a few more super chats here. We got one from James Finnegan. Thank you so much, James. Super chat received. And then a super sticker from Daniel B. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel. Super chat received. It's a pair bound down saying thank you. I appreciate it, sir. LG's like, no, don't change the music. Don't change it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, next up is Aaron G. Barnes. Aaron G. Barnes. He says, how soon can I put down pre-emergent after sprigging St. Augustine slash centipede? I don't want the pre-emergent to hurt the sprigs ability to take root and spread. So I don't, I'm not that familiar with St. Augustine, with, um, with centipede. With St. Augustine, it's, it's pretty aggressive, not quite like Bermuda aggressive, but I would give it a few months, um, Aaron, before I would even consider that. With, with Bermuda, I, literally, I, I, feel, I feel fairly comfortable telling someone if you, if you were to saw a Bermuda lawn, if you wanted to apply pre-emergent on it, at label rates, a few months later, three, four months later, and that's gonna be absolutely fine. With cool season grass, it's not, I would not do that. With that, with any kind of cool season grass, you need to wait an entire year before you introduce uh, pre-emergent. With centipede, I don't, I don't know, um, the centipede, I don't know for sure, but I would imagine with St. Augustine, you would, you, same thing with, similar to Bermuda, you'd probably be able to, you'd be able to get away with, with three to four months after, um, after the, the sprigs have taken root and are growing well. So the big thing, Aaron, is you don't want the sprigs to still be trying to, to find their way in the world and you're going to go start smacking them with, with, with a herbicide. If they have rooted in and they're growing and you're at the point where you're even actually mowing the lawn, then if you want to go out and you want to do a pre-emergent app, then I, I don't have any heartburn about that. But if you're if you're going to want to do a pre-emergent app like, you know, two days or a week afterwards, then, you know, then no, I would say that's, that's, that's far too soon. Plus, given that... I'm not sure where you are. You're probably in Florida since you got St. Augustine. But let's say you are. Let's say that um, um, the time for most from for traditionally for doing pre-emergent in the fall time is like late September, right? So if you just finished putting the sprigs in now, give it the month of August. You know what I mean? Give it the entire month of August. Let it let it continue to grow in and 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 if it's doing well, if it looks all right, then you can you know if you want to do a pre-emergent app this fall, you can. I might wait till spring if you're just trying to be super, super safe and just um, just use post-emergent herbicides to control weeds. It's really up to you. But I can tell you that for Bermuda, as long as you're following label rates, Bermuda does not, I've not, I've not seen an issue with it being affected by pre-emergent, assuming you're following uh, label rates within just a few months of it being sodded. But again, that's Bermuda. With Centipede, I don't know. St. Augustine, I would think would be fine too. With Centipede, I don't, I don't know um, how long you would have to, to wait. If you're trying to be super cautious, Six months to a year, but it's probably unnecessary for those grass types. Okay, uh, Yush Yush says, let's see here, he says, can I blanket spray Celsius Uncertainty for hard to kill weeds in St. Augustine? I've been using a mixture of image weed killer and tenacity, but those weeds are tough. I emailed you pictures, a few pictures back in June. Okay, so first thing, I'm gonna answer the second part of your question first, even though you didn't ask it. So Yush Yush, Please, for the love of everything holy, do not use tenacity 
on warm season grass. I don't know why people do this. I, I'm not sure where, it, where it's coming from, but Tenacity is a cool season herbicide. It is designed for use on rye grass, on fescue grass, on, on Kentucky bluegrass, on cool season grass. The only time you could consider using Tenacity, which again, even then I don't recommend doing it, is when your grass is dormant. Like you never want to spray Tenacity on actively growing warm season grass. It will damage it. I mean, it's not going to kill Bermuda, but it is going to, it is going to damage it. So the Celsius certainty combination for St. Augustine is exactly what you should be using. So if you're going to use that, like the tenacity, like just put it on the shelf in the garage or for if you move somewhere else up north somewhere, or if you have friends up north, send it to them. Um, uh, but I would not be used, do not use tenacity on, on warm season grass. It's not, it's not designed for it. People, people, there are people that tell you you can, but there's, there's really no reason to do it because you've got Celsius. Like, like if there, if, if Celsius were not a thing, right, if there were no really good quality post-emergent herbicides for Bermuda and tenacity were it, then, then yeah, I, I, could, I might see an argument for it. But, but literally, Celsius is developed and designed for warm season grass types. It is, it is very safe for warm season grass types and it's devastating against a lot of the weeds you find in warm season grass. And so use that, use that and certainty, which is also very safe for warm season grass, very devastating against sedges, and they're both safe for St. Augustine. So I would use that combination. Um, image image is, uh, is fine. That's um, that's more of a, of a, of a soil-based post-emergent herbicide. It's going to work a lot slower. You really don't need image if you're using certainty. So uh, if, you're, if, you've got, if you're going after sedges, which a lot of people use image for, then uh, if you've got certainty, there's really no reason to introduce image as well. You can if you want, but there's not, there's not a real need for it. I mean, certainty by itself... Is going to get is going to do the business. You know, what I mean? it's going to do a good job. Just use certainty with some surfactant, and you are you are good to go. If you check the product descriptions for both Celsius and Certainty on the golf course lawn store, um, in there there's a video that will show you how I how I mix the two products together along with surfactant and marker dye and get a really good result. Not the only way to do it, but that's the way I do it, and I get good results using it that way. But tenacity. Do, for, henceforth, do not use tenacity on your on your Saint Augustine. There's no reason to. It's not the correct product for your uh, for your for your grass. And to answer your question, you can blanket the entire lawn with Celsius Certainty. I would not use tenacity. So hopefully, hopefully, that was not unclear with um with with my my feelings of tenacity and warm season grass. All right, uh, LG saying don't change it. I won't change it. LG, I will not. Just for you, I will not change. It. I'll leave the super chat the way it is. I don't want you to be all like, eh, why'd you change it? You know, just we just just getting used to it. It's bad enough you already changed the introduction music, and now you're gonna go change the super chat super chat sounds. So, I'll leave it alone. Believe it or not, I actually had to create that because I there is a there the the, the original version of it sounds it sounds very robotic. So I got into Final Cut and added some um, some audio filters to it and slowed it down to where it makes it sound, you know, a little more Barry Manilowy Super Chat received, sort of. I mean, it's not great, but it's it's the best I could do, man. It's the best I could do. <laughs> All right. Next up is Dr. Nicholas Pratt. He says, just moved to the country. Uh, I guess you moved to here. Welcome. Welcome to, to America. He says, turning uh, a previous cornfield into grass. Hope to have a low-cut lawn in the future. Any suggestions on large scale weed control and substantial unleveling? <clears throat> yeah, so, so, um, so, uh, Dr. Pratt, so if you have a, a cornfield, which is far from level in most cases, what you may have to do initially is to get out there, get some heavy equipment, and actually grade it. You know what I mean? Get out there with like a skid, get someone, you do it or, or have a service do it with like a skid steer or some other piece of equipment to actually grade it, to get it roughly flat, roughly smooth. Do we get rid of a lot of the, the little mounds that are, that are in, um, that are in cornfields? You want to get it relatively flat. And then from there, once you, um, you've done that, as far as weed control, if you decide that you're going to, um, to get rid of all the weeds. I mean, because right now it sounds like you're trying to turn a cornfield into a lawn. So there's not really any grass or anything that you're trying to protect. What I might do is grade it first, get them to grade it first. And then once it's graded, just look and see what's still growing, what's starting to come back after it was graded. And then go and then use like a non-selective herbicide, something like um, glyphosate, or um, there's just, there's tons of different products um, like like Diaquat. There's products with like Diaquat in them that, that, will, that will do, uh, that will kill weeds too. But the idea is that you want to get the grade done first. So, so get it level, relatively level, not like top dress level, but like relatively level first, 
see what you're working with a few weeks after that was done to see how the, you know, as far as um, what we are popping through, take care of that. And now you're in a position to go out and lay sod, or if you have irrigation, do seed if you want. But sod is what I recommend for most people. It's a lot less work, and you're going to get the results a lot faster versus trying to establish a lawn from seed. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I missed out here. I think that's it. I think that's that's all you need. To, you really need to know the again the cornfield. I mean, cornfield is not like you're not you're not you're not on leveling rake life as life as yet. You're going to want to use something, some heavy equipment at first to get, to, uh, you know, to rough things in first. So hope that helps. Again, if you're new to the United States of America, welcome to the country. We seem to like it. And uh, hopefully you, you know, you enjoy, you enjoy living here. Good luck with the project of turning a cornfield into a lawn. If you have any other questions, let me know. Uh, Richard says Bermuda. And thank you. You're very, very welcome, Richard. I'm glad I was, uh, I was helpful. If you need anything else, let me know. And you know, we got to recognize LG. I'm running down here. I'm going to take the next point here. But LG has been a member for eight months. Wow. He says, LG, eight months of, of, of membership. The robotic voice is synonymous with the Ron Henry brand. Never change. All right. So there you go. Eight months, man. Wow. Thank you so much for being a channel member. I really do appreciate that. If you guys wonder how LG is doing that, is um, on, on the YouTube channel, there is, we do have channel memberships. It's everything from like, I think it's like three dollars a month, three dollars or five dollars a month, five dollars a month up to whatever you want to decide, whatever level you want to uh, to go to. What do you get from that? You get like access to like um, uh, special emojis that only channel members get. Uh, I need to do a better job about posting content just for you guys, but more than more than anything else, you get it's a way for you guys to support the channel. If you're wondering how you can do that, uh, you just go to the YouTube channel. If I can find it. You know, it's funny, the hardest part, there we go. Yep, right here. So if you go to the YouTube channel um, and go right here, you'll see, first of all, if you're not subscribed, you need to subscribe. I appreciate that. But then also right here is a big join button. Even YouTube has a big, old, big blue, blue box here saying, here's how you can join the channel membership. And then you have to sign in obviously. And then from there, you can go ahead and, um, and decide what level you want to join at. And away you go. And look at that in... We are watching us, we are watching live, us talk live. Pretty cool, right? Technology. All right, next up is Rod Ravenstein. Cool name, man, awesome name. He says, hey Ron, I am planning a sand level next weekend. Uh, so in eight days from now, cool season lawn. Should I put down some fertilizer now? Sure, why not? You absolutely can, not, it's not gonna hurt anything. The only thing I might say, Rod, is if you are planning to aerate the lawn as part of your leveling process, I would wait till then because that's going to fast track getting the fertilizer down in the soil. But I mean, if you're not planning to aerate, like you're just gonna level it, there's no plans for aeration, then yeah, absolutely doing it, putting it down now, you know, ahead of time, it's not gonna hurt anything. You can, you can do it the day of, you can do it a few, a week before. It's not, you have to be, it's not like you have to be crazy precise. The only thing I would say is that if you, if you're going to aerate, I might wait till, I might wait to do the fertilizer, you know, after you finish aerating the lawn, but it's up to you whether you're doing uh, that or not. It's not, you know, you don't have to be super precise. It doesn't really, doesn't really matter too much. All right. Gary Ingersoll says, I have half an acre that I mow with a riding mower. How often shall I sharpen the blades? Thanks. Uh, depends on how often, how often you're mowing, you're mowing, Gary. A month, I mean, if you can monthly, I know it's a lot of work, but if you can, I mean, depends on, again, depends on how, much, how often you're mowing. Some people will say the entire season. I mean, like, I, I should say this, the guys that, that do it professionally, that mow lawns for a living, a lot of some of those guys will change what will sharpen the blades every couple of days. Some of some guys will do it every day, but some, but every couple of days they'll go, they'll, they'll do it. Um, depending, it depends on how often you're mowing, depends on what if, you, if you're running over a lot of stuff and um, if you're just cutting just grass with it. You'll be able to tell, Gary, because what will happen is whenever you start, you, you finish mowing, get down and look at the end of the, the grass. And if it's a, it's a relatively clean slice, a clean cut, then you're good to go. If you start seeing the edge getting jagged, to where the, the mower is tear, more tearing the grass and cutting it, in that case, you know it's time to get out there and, eat, and sharpen the blade. So you can just you can use the grass, how the grass is looking as a guide. And one thing you'll notice too is that if you uh, telltale sign of a dull blade is you're out there mowing, you're mowing all the time, right? You're mowing every few days like you, like you, like you should to, get, to have your lawn looking as good as you, you, you want it to. Um, but regardless of that, it still looks a little brown and hazy. That's a telltale sign that the blade is not sharp. If you got down there and you look at the, the grass, you'll invariably see that the uh, the edges are not not cleanly cut. So you can I'd say monthly if you're really trying to be um, 
if you're trying to really you know keep it keep the lawn looking as nice as possible but it, it depends on the grass just look at the grid the easiest way is to look at the grass and see how the edges look if they're jagged time to sharpen Okay, uh, uh, Greg Leon says, when you had Sandman top dress, did you have the option to use Super Sod's delivered sand? I enjoy the live streams. No, not really, because part of the top dressing service involves them bringing their own sand. They have their own material. So they have their own, like I've actually been, been, been out to um, where Richard's, um, his facility is, the, the, the farm is, and they have like they have piles and piles and piles and piles of, um, of level mix of sand, of sand material. So no, there wasn't an option to do that because the, the cost of the material is included in the price of doing the work, right? So they, so they bring them their sand and they bring all the, all the equipment to do the, to do the work. So it's not like you have to source it yourself. There was, there was no option for doing that. There was no option for doing that. And they probably would, they'd likely be against it because they have a system for getting the, the level mix into like the spreader very, very easily and very quickly that uh, frankly, having to get it out of bags that are on the pavement is gonna be a lot slower for them. That's why they're able to get through and get it done so quickly. So uh, for all intents and purposes, I'm pretty sure they're gonna, they're gonna say no to that. Even if you offered, say, hey, I'll bring, I'll bring supply of the sand, they'd probably say no, because it's, just, it's more work for them to do it that way. And I'm glad you appreciated it, man. What I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is I have the entire thing recorded. So the live stream is okay, but the audio levels in the live stream weren't always that great. I, I have the entire thing recorded. I'm thinking about cutting it together and making a video just showing the entire thing in a in like a, a traditional video that you guys can reference easier. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do it or not. I don't know if um, you, know, you guys wanna watch like a two hour video of just the lawn being top dressed, but um, if you're interested in that, let me know. I have all the footage and I can uh, I can absolutely make that, make that happen. Grass Thief is here, he says, hey Ron, Tahoma will be uh, will be 90 plus degree days at the time when I'm thinking of applying pre Emergent, your opinions, uh, root, st root stunt or not really sure. So, okay, so, okay, so I see. So you did the Tahoma, it was, it'll be in, it'll be, it will have been sodded for three months at the time we talk about doing pre-emergent. Yeah, you should be fine. Just, just do, just follow the label rates and you should be okay. I mean, if you're, if you're at the point now, grass thief, where the Tahoma is rooted in, you're growing, you're, I'm sorry, you're mowing it regularly, it's looking good you should be absolutely fine to use pre-emergent. If you want to wait until the spring to do it, you can, but here's what's gonna happen. If you do that, you're more than likely gonna have poa and a bunch of other weeds you're gonna to have to be having to clean up in the springtime. So it's really your call. If you wanna be super you know, conservative, you can wait until the springtime. But if it were me, I would be putting down pre-emergent in the fall because it's already, it's already uh, you know, it'll be three months in September. I would, uh, I would do it. Just follow the label rates. Don't go crazy heavy. Just follow the rates for a pre-emergent and you should be absolutely fine. Wouldn't worry about it. Uh, Greg Lyon says, I uh, used Celsius last weekend. I'm not seeing the weeds dying yet. Should I apply more this weekend? Uh, but should I wait till the rain passes in Atlanta area? Uh, patience, Greg. So if you applied, if you applied it using, a, you know, at the proper rates and you use surfactant along with it, Within, t in next, within 10 days, so you did it a week ago, in the next three days or so, you should start seeing whatever you, you sprayed begin to discolor and begin to start dying off. If it's not, um, <clears throat> then yeah, you can do another application, but I would not do it this weekend. It's too soon. So if you applied it last week, I wouldn't do another application. Uh, I'd wait three, at least three weeks between applications because it's it Celsius is not, it is not work quickly like Roundup does. It's not, it's not Roundup, you know what I mean? It takes a while for it to, for it to, uh, to work and, and kill the weeds. And with you only being a weekend, I mean, by now you should be seeing some discoloration, like it should, the, the color of the weeds should, start and should begin to fade a bit, but I would not expect them to be completely dead within a week. It just doesn't work that, that quickly. It's not, it's not how, it, um, how the product works. That is why you're able to spray it in higher temperatures and not damage you along the process. Does that make sense? So definitely not this weekend, way too soon to do another follow-up application. Give it, give it more time, give it more time. As far as when you do decide to do another application, yes, I would wait for a stretch of dry weather. So a, a day is fine. So as long as it's not gonna rain that day or within four to five hours after you, applic you apply it, you're gonna be fine. You know what I mean? So if you, I would not apply it like in the morning if it's gonna rain like at lunchtime. So if it's gonna rain like an hour or two later, don't do it then. But if you're gonna apply it in the morning and it's gonna rain in the evening, you're fine. You're, it'll be dry and, and, uh, and be good to go by then. I wouldn't, wouldn't sweat it. 
Rush C is here next. He says, happy Friday, all. Ron, <clears throat> when using a rotary mower, how soon after applying granular furt can I start back mowing? Don't want to suck it up, suck up the granules and mess up the coverage. So with how soon after applying a granular furt can I start? Well, after you water it, so I would apply the granular furt, I would water it in and then just mow it the next time you do to mow it. The whole thing of sucking up the granules, yeah, I mean, you might pull some of it up, Russ, but it's not gonna, I mean, if you watering it in is going to help prevent a lot of that. So apply the furt, water it in, and then mow the next time you're ready, you're supposed to mow, which will probably be, you know, whatever, two, three days later, and, and should be good to go. No, uh, no worries. And then, uh, and then uh, Yesha says, gotcha, no more tenacity. Thanks, man. Yep, yeah, yeah I, I mean, again, I don't have anything, I'm not against tenacity. I'm just, I just don't think you should use it on warm season grass because there's no reason to use it on warm season grass because we've got tons of great products for warm season grass. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Greg Lyon says, how wide of an opening do you think is needed for Sandman's tractor? I have a narrow five foot section that would need to get through to level my backyard, thank you. Five feet, that's probably not wide enough. Probably not wide enough. Um, uh, actually, I know it's not wide enough because they have the, because um, it's not just the tractor. It's a tractor that they, that they use, they, they use the tractor for, um, they have one that they, they have the, the, the airway attached to, which is like their aeration tool. And then they have the one, they have another tractor that has the, um, the, the leveling, like the, 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 the drag that they use. And both of those are way wider than five feet. You know, so you're looking, you're probably looking at taking down a section of fence if you want to get them in. But uh, five feet is is not going to be enough, unfortunately. It's not going to be enough. I mean, call call uh, Richard, call them, call them up and, and ask them, and see what they tell you. But they're probably going to tell you you're going to need to take down a section of fence to get the equipment into that area. Five feet, almost positive, isn't enough because five feet is only like, I mean, what you're looking at, like this, 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 the uh, what you're seeing here as far as the um, the width of the bookshelves behind me, like that is. Uh, that's probably about five feet to here. From here to the wall is about five feet. And that's, that's way, the tractor's way wider than that. You know, it's way wider than that. That's not gonna be, that's not gonna be big enough, unfortunately. Sean is here. He says, uh, hey Ron, another great live vid. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate you coming to hang out. The yard is on second season and is looking its best. Cheers from Huntsville. Cheers. Thanks for, uh, for hanging out. And I'm glad the, the lawn is looking, uh, looking great, sir. That's what I like to hear. Love to hear that. Tom B's up next. He says, yo, Ron, any tips on how to apply hydrotane? I applied this hour after a heavy rain and then tried to water in a bit uh, with a handheld hose. So far, I think uh, this worked, but wondering what others do. So the, I've, some people will do what you did, Tom. They, they try and, if they don't have irrigation, they plant it around rainfall. So they will, um, they'll, well, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll water it first, they'll water the lawn, and then they will apply hydrotain and then wait, wait for the rain to come, like hopefully within an hour or so to water it in. What you did will work as well too. You, you had a heavy rain shower, lawn soil is wet, put the hydrotain down and then water, and then take a garden hose and, and, and go over the lawn to help um, flush it in into the soil as well. That, that technique can work as well too. The thing I tell you is if you decide that you want a little bit more headroom to where you don't have to be quite so um, on the ball as far as watering it in after application is to use the granular. The granular you have, you know, a three to five day window from the time you apply it to the time you need to water it in. It's not like you have to do it right away like the liquids. The negative to the to the granular is that it doesn't go as far as the liquid does. So like most things in life, there is no free lunch, right? So what you did, your technique sounds, sounds uh, exactly fine. Another thing you can do as well, uh, Tom, is, let me show you here, is if you go with the, gar the hose end sprayer, that tends to put down more water by volume than a backpack sprayer. So if you use something like uh, four plates back in stock, yeah, yay for that. That's great. So four plates back in stock, guys. If you got, it must have just come back in stock today because I know it was when I looked uh, when I looked uh, yesterday, it was out of stock. So it's back in stock now. Probably not for long. So if you want to get some, get some. Get it, you know, get it before it sells out again. Because every time we've gotten it, it's got it's in stock for literally a few days and sells out. So at any rate, you'll notice for both four play and for hydrotain. There's the hose end sprayer option. This is going to put down more water per volume. And it looks like only the hose end sprayer is available for that. This is going to put down more water per volume whenever you are applying it 
than whenever you have the gallon and you're mixing it up in a backpack sprayer. Like this is gonna put down less water, right? So um, the what I what I might do is do what you did. So wait for it to rain and then go with the hose end sprayer option because there's so much more water um, going down with that, you should be good to go. It's really the the concentrate where you're really gonna need to get run irrigation or get or wait or hopefully get some rainfall like right after applying it to get a good result with uh, with hydrotain or the four play product. So hope that helps. What you did it sounds exactly right. And then unfortunately, four play is not available in a granular, not yet anyway. So uh, so so in that case, you're gonna be stuck with using taking the liquid approach. So hose end sprayer is a way to get increase the volume of water that goes down as part of your application process. Latanja, what's going on, Latanja? Says, hey everyone, what's going on, Latanja? Latanja Moore. And the next up is Miles Blaine. He says, trying to find a verticutter for rent, but haven't been able to find one. Any recommendations of where to find where to look northeast of Atlanta? Yeah, I do. So call go to uh, Keystone. Keystone in Duluth, Georgia. Call up Dan. Tell him Ron sent you. He will charge you double, but don't worry about it. It'll, it'll, it'll be, be just fine. And uh, they should be able to get you all set up. So I'm, just, I'm kidding about that. He's not going to charge you double. He might. Call, call up Keystone Equipment Rental in Duluth, Georgia, and um, they will, uh, Dan will be able to get you squared away as far as a verticutter. Let's see here. You know what? I might, I might be able to do you, do you a solid and I'll give you their number. I'll make it even easier for you. Here we go. So their phone number for Keystone is right here. Let's see. Back up and let's see. Keystone and there. That's their phone number. So call them and they will uh, they'll take care of you. They have they have all that stuff. They have a verticutter, they have turf rake, they got they have all the all the toys, everything you need. And if you need a top dresser, they've got you covered there too. They have the top dressing package as well. LG says, um, at Gary, whenever you don't get a yep, here we go. Whenever you don't get a clean cut with the rotary mower is when you should sharpen. The shredded grass tips will leave a grayish white cast on the lawn. Thank you, LG. There we go. Great, great answer. Almost like great minds think alike, right? Okay, Matt Hayes uh, says, what is the best type of Bermuda grass seed? So many brands and types. I'm in Texas and working on planning a renovation for my lawn. So it depends, man. It depends what you're after. So Arden 15 was a really good one. Arden 15 is no longer available. It's been discontinued. So uh, if you call up Hancock or any of the other seed, the seed places, they will tell you to go with Yukon, a seed called Yukon. It's been you know well-reviewed and people seem to be liking that. So if you're going the seed route, Yukon is what I would say. Pennington supposedly is working on a replacement for Arden 15, but it's not around as yet. And really with you doing a renovation, I imagine you're probably not doing it this year, right? Unless you, if you are doing it this year, you gotta, you gotta get on the ball now. I mean, there's not much time left in the season to get that done. But if you're planning to do your renovation next year, by then I imagine the seed's gonna be available, release, and you'll be able to go with that. Or you could just do easy mode, which is sod. Sod is what I would say, Matt, is the way to go. That's gonna be a lot easier. It's gonna be faster. You're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be enjoying the lawn faster. And then there's there's a lot of really good um, you know, types of Bermuda, like Tahoma 31 is a new kit on the block that's really nice and that comes in a sod, and that that could be a great option for you. You know what I mean? But I mean if you if you're going the seed route, Yukon is uh is what you're is probably what you're you're gonna be looking at as far as uh grass seed for Bermuda. But there's just it depends on what on what you like. Do you like a thinner blade, a thicker blade? They, you know, all of them. You know, they all they all look a little bit different. But Tahoma Thirty One is a, a newer cultivar that has a lot of benefits that you might want to look into as well. But from my understanding, it does not come in a seed. It's only sod. Okay, uh, and uh, thanks to Latanja again, and uh, Greg Leon is here. He says. I think a shorter sand dressing video would be great, like 20 minutes. I tried to hang around the entire time, but I had to work. You must have taken the day off for all the fun. Yeah, I took yeah, I took that day off. I took Monday off. Monday was a vacation day for me. And uh and so I could just um live stream the entire thing and and just and just take the day off and enjoy it. So yeah, so it's a shorter one, huh? So cut that down like 20 minutes. I should be able to do that. I should be able to do that, Greg. We'll, we'll see what we can make happen. See what we can make happen. Should be good. Make make for make for a fun time, right? All right. David Castillo is up next. He says, um, "Hi, Roy, Ron. Close enough. 
He says, I started a new seeded uh, seed project on an acre, Hancock Highlander Bermuda seed, two weeks in and the seed is starting to germinate. When should I start putting fertilizer down? Uh, I don't know, a month from now, probably if, you, if two weeks in, it's already, it's it's growing. You, probably, you likely don't need fertilizer as yet. So give it give it six weeks, for, let the lawn, let the grass seed start catching itself and start doing well. And then you can start applying, introducing fertilizer if you want. If and when you do, uh, use something that's like a, a, a lower nitrogen fert, like a, like a starter fert, like something like this. I'll show you here. So not for play, but something like the Yardmaster Triple 12, like this one here, this is the green bag. Something like this is what you want to use. It's a good, it's a good option for a new, a newly seeded lawn. Like this, this is a good balance for it. That will work well on a, in your, your seeding project. But if it's already growing in, there's not a real, there's not a need to smack it with a ton of nitrogen right now. That triple 12 is going to be, it's going to be, it's going to put in about a little under half a pound, which is good. It's not, not too much. Um, but again, that way the, the grass that's growing, the new grass still has plenty of nutrient to be able to do well to eat and do well all right zoysia versus bermuda is up next he says hey ron i'm a real mower now awesome that's awesome man we gotta clap it up give you some give you some uh, some depth for that he says well almost it's a manual real mower still counts uh but no more scalloping and the grass is looking great imagine that imagine that going to a real mower and your your grass is scalping less i can't imagine that I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'm glad to hear that you went to a real mower, a Zoysia versus Bermuda, and that your lawn is looking better, even albeit with the manual, and it's going to get even better over time. And when you start, um, when you start, when you move into a power real mower, it's going to be be next level. So the 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 benefits you're seeing from going from rotary to manual, going from like a manual to power drill mower, is going to be another order of magnitude of awesomeness. It's going to be that much better. That 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 much better. Okay, uh, let's see. William Tate says, hi, Ron. Following your big project uh, looks great. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, Will, sorry, William. Says, Can you share any advice on the Irrigreen watering system? I don't know what that is. I've never heard of the Irrigreen watering system. I can look into it really quick, get quickly so I, can, so I can give you my opinion, but I, I've never... Um, I've never even heard of it to know what it's, what it's, uh, let's see. So Eric Green sprinkler, what is this? It is it's smart sprinklers that save water. Is it one of those sprinklers that will, that will spray that will, you can, you can shape, you can shape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's one of those. Okay. Uh, I think, I think they have some merit to them. So I've seen the mechanical versions of it. I, I'm looking at the video here. Actually, I can show you guys. We can, we can talk and show at the same time, right? It's easier to do that versus me just talking to myself because you guys can't see it. So this is what he's talking about. You see how it's like, uh, it's like, it's like varying how it's, it's spray pattern is. It's a cool concept. I think if you get it set up properly, it can save water and it, it looks like it would, it could, uh, it could work well. Uh, I know the mechanical ones, the mechanical ones are the reviews that I see for most of those are, are usually not that great. This one looks like it's got some kind of a controller for it. And I guess uh, if you have enough pressure to run it, to run the system, it, it looks like it could work well. I've never, I've never used one to be able to, to say how well it would work. It's likely too small for my lawn, like a lawn my size. If you look at the lawn being shown here, it's a relatively small area. So for a lawn like that, it, it likely would do well. For a larger lawn, like, you know, you got a lot more you know square footage to cover. That's where going to the, tr the traditional uh sprayers like the like the the hunter with the pgp heads like something like that is going to work better on my lawn something like this might work well um along the edges right so if i were trying to um you know if i were trying to like uh, not put water in the flower beds even that even with that you can do with the pgp so i mean it's 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 something that i think would be better for a smaller lawn for a larger lawn like mine this something like this is not something i, I would um i would use so that's my advice on it. Having never used it, um, William, but it's just uh, take that take that with a grain of salt. But that, that, that's my thoughts on it. This one looks like it actually works better. The, the mechanical ones, all, I've seen some pretty nasty reviews on those. But that, this one looks like it actually could uh, could work okay. But I've never tried it, so I can't say from experience. All right, JA says is up next. Is good evening. Thanks for all the info and ideas. What was the difference between a wedding agent? versus let's uh, uh, water manager can you use both apologies ahead of time if already asked 
Uh, you'd have to look in. You'd have to look into seeing how they work. Um, JA, they probably the Lesko's water manager likely is a wedding agent. So it looks like it is. It's probably a. It's yeah. So the, the, you're probably talking about two. They're talking about the same product. Um, so Lesko's water um, moisture manager, water manager is a type of wedding agent. So yeah, I think you're, I think you're probably you're talking about the same the same thing. You're talking about the same thing. Like Hydrotain, even though they don't like to call it that, it is a moisture manager. It is a wedding agent. It's a, it's a product that helps um, that helps the soil retain moisture and make it available to the roots. So hope that helps. Um, JA for the most part they are they're one they're one and the same. You're very welcome, Miles. And then next up is Zach Hall. He says, "Happy Friday, Ron. I switched to a John Deere 220E." It's a beast. I hope your lawn's recovering well. Can you talk about the shovel method the guy used in your back area? Yeah, so I need to show it more so than, than explain it. So, okay, so if you take an area of your lawn that is um, where you went heavy with the top dressing, like heavier than I say, right? You've oil, you violated the rule where it's like two or three inches of sand, right? Obviously the grass is gonna have a hard time growing through two or three inches. So what he did with a shovel and I'll have to take you guys over there tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, I'll 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 do a story and show you. Is you he takes a shovel and he like um, pushes it down in the sand and then pushes back a little bit, and then and then back fills that little area with some of the top dressing mix and then removes the shovel. And what that does is it pushes the grass to the surface, so the roots are still there, and the the you know the grass the, the roots are still connected to the to the soil. But now the grassing gets sunlight, so it's going to it's going to recover faster. It's going to spread into that new area that's, that's top dressed a little bit heavier. And he recommended doing that every you know every foot to eighteen inches. Just you know punch in, push back, backfill a little bit, and then when you remove the shovel, you're going to see the grass is going to be exposed. The the you know the, the leaf is going to be exposed to the sunlight, which is what you want, and that's going to help it spread and fill in faster. So that's the whole theory behind it. Um, it's cool. I've never seen it done before. I was like, that makes a lot of sense. That's what you just did. And he says, yeah, yeah we, you know, it's something we, we came up with and or we, we, we figured out. And uh, when we do top dressing on lawns that are that require heavier top dressing, we tend to do that. We do, tend to do some parts of the lawn and show the homeowner how to do it so they can go through and um, expose the, the grass blades um, in the areas of the lawn where it was the top dressing was a bit heavier, if that helps. So, okay, John Williams is up next. He says, hey, Ron, waiting for my yard mastery sprayer. Uh, and about to kill some bugs with Miramichi Green Pest Control. Do you know if this has a shelf life? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, I guess everything probably has a shelf life, but I can, um, I'll find out for you. I'll ask the nice folks at Miramichi Green what the shelf life is on the product. But it's, I think it's the same thing. As long as it's kept cool and dry, you should be good for a very long time, uh, John. But um, I've not, I've not been told about any specific shelf life on the product that, you know, it's good for a year or anything like that. I mean, as, as long as you're, you're Capping it off tightly, you should be. It should work well for several seasons, is what I'm is what I'm getting at. But I will. That's a good question. I'll find out. I'll ask uh, the nice folks in Miramichi Green, and I will get an answer for you. I should know that. And when, and once I get the answer, I will add it to the description, uh, the product description on the store, so that anyone else that has a question will be able to just find it right there. All right, uh, Daniel Infante is next. He says, uh, "How do you, hey Ron? How do you feel about a product by Pennington called Ironite? It's a it's a good product. I mean, people that, that like it, that use it, seem to like it. I've never used it. I've never. I don't really tend to apply pure iron products to my lawn because I, I get my iron in like um, in like Nutrizolve or either a fer the fertilizer that I tend to apply on the lawn tends to have iron in it." So I don't need to apply strictly an iron product. That said, people that use ironite seem to like it. I just never use it because I, I haven't really seen the need. I'm getting enough iron from um, from Nutrisolve, you know what I mean? So, or Turfplex. So I get my iron using one of these guys. So if I back up here, this, uh, like any of these, any like flagship has iron, stress blend has iron, Nutrisolve has uh, iron in it, 2% iron. Turfplex has iron in it. Um, um, my, let me see here. So it, yeah, so it depends. So in other words, I have means ways of getting it. There's no reason for me to go out and go get iron. I just and then do another iron app on top of all the iron I'm already getting. You see what I mean? So take that take that for what it's worth. I mean, again, there's people that let, use ironite and like it. I just never have because I don't see the need to. Uh, John Williams has a question here about. 
about uh, about uh, Celsius. He says, "Hey Ron, will Celsius WG um, broadleaf and grassy weed control kill goose grass? Can I blanket spray my centipede for all weeds without killing my grass?" Um, I don't. I'm trying to think if, if it's labeled for goose grass. I keep getting this question. I think you need you're going to need um, revolver for that, uh, John. So for goose grass, uh, you're going to need uh, this product. I'll put it in. The chat. It's more. It's kind of expensive, but it's it will get rid of goose grass. Um, and then, as far as your question uh, is, can you apply Celsius on a uh, spray your entire centipede lawn and kill the weeds without killing the grass? Yes, that is. You can do that. That is. That's why I like it. It's a great. As long as you're applying it at the, the rates on the label, that's exactly what will happen. Your your centipede lawn will be fine. The weeds you're trying to target. Assuming they're 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 on the label, they're ones that that send that Celsius will control will be killed by uh, the product. So, if you want to target goosegrass specifically, it's here at John Williams. You're going to want Revolver, and that's um, again not inexpensive, but that's uh, as far as like for like grassy weeds, that's uh, it's a great a great option. Great 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 product. Great product. So look in the revolver if you really want to get rid of goosegrass. Celsius and, cer and or certainty, uh, not so not so good for that for that particular one. But revolver will get it. Uh, Greg says there's a bunch of darker green uh, and shiny areas that is spreading in my Bermuda. I'm hoping Celsius with surfactant and certainty will take care of that stuff. Maybe Dallas grass. No. So if it's darker green and shiny, it's a sedge. More than likely, it's a sedge. It's more than likely. Um, it's more than likely this stuff, um, Greg. So I can show you really quick here. It's more than likely nut sedge or a sedge or kalinga of some of some sort. So if we go look at here in, in certainty, and we go look at the the um, the pictures for the product. This is probably what you're looking at, right? It probably looks something like that. Uh, it's like shiny. It's like shiny, a, th a relatively thin blade. Yeah, it looks like kind of grassy. This is what for this you're going to want to use certainty, and it's um it's like this is I think this is yellow yellow sedge. So it doesn't really matter any of the sedges. Certainty is going to kill them. But if that's what you're dealing with, uh, that is uh, if it looks like that, which based on what you're describing is what I think it is. It is uh, is more than likely a sedge of some sort. Dallas grass it doesn't really look is not really shiny like like uh like the sedges are it tends to be like a like duller in color kind of like how um kind of like how crabgrass looks sort of kind of like it looks closer to it looks it looks more like crabgrass than it does the than it does kalinga or nut sedge so more than likely celsius uh, sorry certainty will knock that out if, if, if what you have looks like that greg Celsius will be okay for it, but really what you want to use is certain is a certainty. What you really want is this product. Is uh is this guy. This is what you want is what you're gonna to want to use for sedges. Not uh not I mean Celsius, uh, Celsius not so much. It's 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 labeled for for a couple of them, but it's really not as good as certainty. This will kill all of them. This will get rid of all the sedges. This is this is what you really want for sedge control in your in your warm season lawn. So hope that helps, sir. It, it sounds to me based on what you're describing that you're dealing with sedges of some sort, not not Dallas grass. Could be wrong, but it sounds like sounds like that to me. Miles Blaine says, follow up on the question with the verticutter. Will verticutting earlier in the year help prevent the need for a mid-season scalp? Every July I have to do a high to cut reset and I hate it. No, not really. I mean it's gonna it'll help some so you may have to wait, you may make it till like mid-July. But if you, the, the problem that you have, you're running in two miles, is because you're mowing the lawn, you're feeding the lawn, and it's just, it's just going to get thicker. It's a byproduct of doing that. You're cutting the grass regularly and you're feeding it. It's going to thicken up. And if you say you verticut in, I don't know, let's say you verticut in like uh, April, right? Kind of early, but see so you did it in April. You get April, May, June, so that's like three months of like no real, no real, um, you know, no, nothing really doing, being done to the lawn to help thin it out. And what's going to happen is it's going to start getting thicker. So it's, so you can do the scalp or what you can do is do another verticut this time of year and that will thin the lawn out again too. And then you're, you're good to go. Of the two, verticutting is less aggressive or less, I mean, from an apparent standpoint, the lawn looks less bad after being verticut than it does after being scalped. You know what I mean? So if I had a choice between the two, I would verticut over scalping. The one negative, here's and, here's, and kind of cover this, 
The one negative to um, to verticutting, especially if you're using the ones that don't have a grass catcher, is you're literally gonna be making a big mess on the lawn. So while the grass will recover faster, the amount of work involved is probably a bit more with a verticutter if you don't have um, like a interchangeable cartridge system more like the uh, like any of the ones from Allet because you'll verticut the lawn and all the trash, all the debris will be there. And you still got to get out there now with a rake and rake it all up and bag it and get rid of it, so, which is like another that's like another step, which is a lot of work. So in that case, if you can deal with the lawn looking ugly, the scalp might be actually easier. So it just it really depends on you. Depends on you, but the verticut is going is not going to look as bad. It's not going to look as bad as um, as the scalp will. So hope that helps, sir. It's just a nature of the beast, man. You want to you want to have the lawn short and tight, and you're going to be mowing it all the time. Got to verticut it. Got to got to do something to thin it out mid season. Uh, John Williams says, "I just ordered a big bottle of Prodiamine. Do you know if it has a shelf life and for how long?" I have some research. I'm not sure what the shelf life of prodiamine, um, the, the water dispersible granule is. It, it, it depends on a couple of a lot of different factors, John. Is, where is it kept? Is it kept uh, is it kept in a place where it's dry and cool? Is the, the cap on it nice and tight? It, if that's the case, it should last for several years. Several, several years uh, should be good for, for, for use in, your, um, in your, your lawn. But if, it, if you allow moisture to get in the bottle, it's not going to be good if it gets really hot. Also, same thing if it gets, you know, gets same thing. I already said moisture, but if it's kept dry and cool, a bottle of uh, of the dispersible granule should last for several for several years. But check on check online and um, and see here. Let's see if I can find out. Prodiamine shelf life. Does it have a shelf life? Let's see. <coughs> three years. This <coughs> has a shelf life, shelf life of three years from the date of purchase, or really from the day you open it. So three years is what is. Um, is the conventional wisdom. And that's that's true for most lawn care products. So like um, growth regulator, you know, you go out, people will say, you know, you can go out and you can buy a bottle of, of uh, Teenex and be like, oh, I can get like a gallon of this stuff and I'll be have PGR forever. Yeah, true. But really the shelf life on that product is around three to five years. You really want to lean more towards a three year, which is why getting a smaller quantity that you're going to use that's fresh is a better option in my opinion. But uh, just, I, just, I just did a quick Google search for you there, John, and three years is the number that came back. So as long as you, you use it up within three years, you should be good. Uh, Gus P Music says, you ever use uh, vermiculite for moisture? I have not. I have not, Gus, I have not. I don't, I've not used that before. All right, and uh, Greg already answered your question. We're winding down here, guys. John Williams says, I plan on buying some Nutrizolve. Um, can I apply this the same, can I apply it at this time of year? Yes. And also, what about release zero? Can I apply it at this time of year, my centipede? Yes. And here's the thing, John, I'm gonna let you know a tip. You can mix the Nutrizolve and the release zero, and you can apply them at the same time this time of year. No problem at all. You can absolutely do that. This weekend is actually my, um, my it's like my end of the month weekend. So it's gonna be growth regulator. It's going to be Nutrizolve, release 901C, Nutri-Kelp, Biospectrum, all that's going to be going down the lawn. That's going to be my plan for this weekend. At some point, probably Saturday is what I'm thinking. Probably Saturday because Sunday is Formula One Day. Got to watch, gotta, gotta watch the, the Hungo. Hungo. Got to watch the, 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 the Grand Prix. See if, see if Ferrari can, can actually finish the race. We'll see. We'll see. But um, but yes, to answer your question, John, you can, you, you can apply all of them at the same time. You do not need to water them in after application. Just spray them, spray and forget, and go on with your day. Donna Hill says, so my neighbor's hose was running, ooh, Lord, that's not good, was running for four days and soaked part of my lawn for four days. Thinking about applying a fungicide, hybrid Bermuda. Uh, as long as it's not getting wet now, it should be okay, Donna. I mean, if you want to apply a fungicide, you can, but it's probably going to be just fine. Just, just allow it to dry out. Keep people off of it so that they don't like make big, nasty ruts and dips in it. But, um, but yeah, if you... Um, but yeah, yeah, don't yeah, just keep 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 um keep people out of it. But um but if but as far as if you um if you want to do a fungicide, then a product like um like Headway is a good option. So something like this. I'll show you. So go to the golf course lawn store, right? And then go to shop and the fungicide section. And in there you can scroll down and find the top shelf, which is Headway. So if you want to do a fungicide, you probably don't need it. But if you do want to do one, 
this is what I would say to go with. Headway's got propiconazole, like Chauvin in it, and that will uh, will keep you all squared away. Should be good to go with that. But the big thing is just stay off of it. Let it let it dry out. If you want to do a fungicide, not a bad not a bad idea, but just probably not necessary. Uh, thanks, I appreciate that, John. He says thanks, Ron. I hit that like button hard, and will share and subscribe. I really do appreciate it, man. Any any help any help you guys can have as far as you know promoting the channel, sharing it with friends, friends, family. Anyone that you think might be getting into lawn care, anything you do to spread the word, I really do appreciate it. I need uh, I need the help. I need the help. I need the help and support. All right, uh, let's see here. John Williams says, can I spray uh, the lawn with insecticide with the Miramichi pest control? Yes, bugs must die, can't stand roaches. Do you think this stuff will kill palmetto bugs, AKA big roaches? You can try it. I don't, I know it will, it's, it will kill roaches. We can try it on the palmetto bugs and see what you get. Um, but I don't know. I don't, I'm pretty sure palmetto bug specifically is not listed on the label, John, but try it out and see, cause it will, it will target roaches. So try it and, and, and see what you get. It, it kills a lot of, it kills a lot of stuff that's not on the label uh, as well too. So, uh, give that, give that a go. It's a great product. It's a really, really good product. Really, really been very well received. People that have been using it seem to really, really like it. Daniel B is here. He says, happy Friday, everyone. Ron, is it okay to blanket spray a Bermuda weed garden with Celsius certainty in early August or would you wait till the fall for dormancy? Nope, you can do it right now if you want. You can do it now. Uh, that's, that is part of the reason. You guys think about it. I mean, I've been doing YouTube for a number of years and doing long care YouTube for a number of years, but really Celsius uncertainty is really the one, like I, I, I've been thinking about this for a while, putting a lot of thought into what can I recommend that is going to, one, produce results is going to be safe to, to apply to um, to most warm season grass types. So as long as you don't have Bahia grass, you can use Celsius and Certainty. If you have Bahia, you can use Certainty, but not Celsius. Not Celsius. Um, and what's also safe to use when temps get higher, right? So and it checks all those boxes. So that's why that combination is so good. The video that I that I filmed for that product for that combination that blend, I purposely did it last year this time of year when it's hot. And I, had, I didn't have any discoloration in my lawn and it, wor it works absolutely fine. So yeah, to answer your question, that was a long-winded answer for yes, you can blanket spray with, uh, with uh, Celsius and certainty if you need it. I mean, if you, just, if you don't need a blanket spray the entire lawn, don't because you, know, you don't want to waste herbicide and spray um, the entire lawn if you don't need to. But if you need to do that, you can. Just follow the label rate. In that video, I also show you the technique, a good technique for spraying so you don't over apply. And if you do that, along with some marker dye, you should be good to go, all right? So to watch that video again, it's in the product description for both Celsius and Certainty, and it will help you um, produce a good result. Run a cow says, it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit this week. So just uh, water over here, okay, all right. And then finally, Ryan Wolfel says, um, hey, after spraying weeds, how many days should I wait to do my liquid fert PGR spraying? Doesn't matter. You could do it. You could do them all on the same day if you wanted to. It doesn't matter. Like that, that, the only thing I'd say when it comes to, um, as far as after applying, spraying for weeds is mowing. Like you don't want to, you don't want to, um, apply herbicide and then go mow the grass like an hour later. What I would, what I would do is, you know, apply your herbicide and wait a few days to mow, but you could literally do, if you're gonna do what you do this, Ryan, I would do your liquid fert, your PGR, and then the final thing I would do is your herbicide, and then just leave it, and, and you're fine. You, you could do them all on the same day if you wanted to. There's not really a, um, a, a time frame you need to wait between like herbicide application and then liquid fert and growth regulator. You can literally do them all at the um, at the same time. At the same time, if you're blanket spraying the entire lawn, you might even try mixing them together and just doing and saving yourself some time. But uh, but yeah, you should no, no issues with doing that. There's no time frame where you have to wait. Donna Hale says, "Thank you, Ron. I put down the carbon kit last weekend. Can't believe how great my turf responded. Awesome, love to hear that. Yeah, within two to three days, you should start seeing results, Donna. And I'm glad that you're getting great results with it. Good product. And the nice thing is, you just apply it. It's like like set and forget, right? You spray it, and you don't have to worry about watering it in or anything like that, which is pretty cool, right? It's that's always." That's always a benefit to um, to applying you know the product. You don't have like another step you have to go do afterwards. All right, um, I think we have here. John says, "What's the name of the store that sells good grass seed?" Thanks, Ronnie. You're a huge help for the home. Thank you. Uh, look up um, Hancock Seed. I think they're in Lakeland, Florida. 
Hancock seed should be able to get you squared away as far as good grass seed. And then Greg Lyon says, do the sound absorbing tiles on your wall help reduce the noise in the adjoining room or are they more for decoration? Uh, no, what they do, well, because for, for good audio, what you don't want is um, reflection, a lot of, you wanna try and minimize reflections, uh, Greg. So like for example, I'm talking right now, there's a mic that's right here, just out of, out of frame. You don't see it like right here, it's a mic right here. And what you don't want, because I've got like a screen here and this desk is hard, you don't want me speaking and then the mic picking it up and it bouncing off of the screen and reflecting into the mic. And I've got, I've got enough hard stuff all around me that I don't want this wall to also reflect sound into the microphone. So the idea behind this is to break up, to, is to help so absorb and to break up that, that um, to, 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 to improve, it's all about improving audio. It's not just for decoration. Believe me, if I could just have the, lawn, the, the wall just white, I would have it just white, but this, the, but this does, does help. Before I put this down, I actually did some audio recordings without having this here and then I applied it and added some more and then did audio recordings and listened to the difference between them and sound wise and it, it does make a difference in in um in the quality of the audio because also in this in here I don't have carpets I don't have it's all like it's hardwood so anything I can do to help minimize reflections is going to produce better audio which you know for you guys I want to make sure the audio sounds good that is the whole reasoning for that and uh, and cool guys. Well, I don't think we have any more questions or comments. You guys are you guys was a it was a light a light thing a light thing tonight. So guys, some other some other things to think about. Um, I the lawn was top dressed again last Monday. And so as far as and I waited till this time of year because a question I've been getting from a lot of you guys is can you can you top dress this late in the season? And if you guys you guys hear me talk, I always tell you really late April all the way into. Um, all the way into like the really the second week of August, you can get your top dressing done. So I waited till like the last week of July to get it to do mine. But if you guys are still on the fence, if you really want to get top, get want to level your lawn this season, your warm season lawn like um, Bermuda, you can still do that. You still got time. So uh, you know I, I would not wait until the end of August to decide you're gonna to to do uh, a top dressing. Get it you know get it done now. And. Um, Outside of that, um, in the Golf Force Lawn Store, we've now got four playback in stocks. For any of you guys that are struggling with localized dry spots and need some help with moisture management, uh, we got four play in stock, um, hydrotain in the granular and hydrotain in the liquid as well. So we got you um, covered as far as that goes. And um, also, again, uh, PGR, we also have that back in stock as well too. So if any of you guys are, are still on the fence or need to get some PGR, Primo, we've got you covered there as well all right guys we are and i said that last question we got one we got two more so let me let me go through these here really quick and then we will call it a night so shauna says last question all right we'll see just dethatched the lawn a week ago some spots need a tiny cut and some don't hasn't grown enough should i wait longer to mow it yeah i mean if you want to i mean you can mow it the areas that need them that need a, a cut mow it. You know what I mean? The areas that don't need mowing, just you can skip them. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you're, Sean, here's the problem. You're asking a guy that, that loves mowing his lawn if you should mow your lawn. My answer is pretty much always going to be yes. The only time I'm going to tell you to not mow your lawn is if you just finished top dressing. If you top dressed your lawn yesterday and you call me and you say, hey, Ron, I want to mow my lawn tomorrow. I'm going to say no, too soon. But outside of that, that one scenario, uh, I'm probably going to tell you to mow. If you tell me, you say, hey, it's like raining outside. Should I go mow my lawn while it's raining? I'm probably going to tell you no. But outside of like just a, you know, edge cases like that, pretty much the answer is always going to be mow your lawn. Because the thing you got to realize too is mowing is going to help it recover faster. You know, dethatching is hard on the lawn. Like you're doing, you're taking a lot of debris out. You're taking a lot of material out. And like the mowing is going to help stimulate new and fresh growth. And it's going to help the lawn recover faster. So yeah. The answer is um, obviously to mow. Definitely, definitely, definitely mow. Uh, Jesus Prado says, what's the sprinklers using golf courses? They have like two nozzles. One aims up and the other one aims down. I don't know, uh, Jesus. I don't know. I mean, if you want to see what kind of sprinklers are like, they're, they're not like these. Like these are my, my irrigation heads running now. These are the PGP heads from, um, from Hunter. So you can see what that looks like. You can see they have a pretty good throw. You can tune them to, you can tune them to throw low, you can tune them to throw high, but, uh, and they put out a pretty good volume of, uh, of water. So if you're, again, if you're looking for something that will cover a lot, like again, if you look here, like that sprinkler head that's off there on the left, 
Oh, let me get you a good one here. The one that's right here, like this one that's on, like right here in front of us. That's at the, right at the beginning of the patio. That that sprinkler has is throwing water a good 30 feet, maybe a little bit longer. So um, I don't know. The ones that are, that are used on golf courses, I don't know what they're actually called. I don't know, um, um, Jesus. But as far as, um, I guess my point is that you don't need to go out and source golf course sprinkler heads to get a good job watering your lawn. Like the, the, the Hunter heads, the PGP heads will do a great job. You just need to make sure that they're set up and, and, and calibrated properly. And then, okay, now this will be the last question. Tavares, Alan says, what is your go-to for liquid fertilizer? So I'll give you two options, Tavares. So I got two here. One is, the, the one that's all one and done is Turfplex. This is a great product, great option. This is what I would use if you say, I just want one liquid fertilizer that has nitrogen, has a bit of everything in it, has some potassium in it, and also has some micronutrient, Turfplex. If you want, if you're fine to use multiple products, then I like 901C, Nutrikelp, and Nutrizolve. These three, like these are both fertilizers. This is a, this is your macros. This is a kelp product. Um, and then also this is your micronutrient. So it's a couple of different, you're doing a couple of different, uh, you're doing a blend, but the net result is better than what you will get from just using Turfplex. But if you only want to do one, Turfplex is the one I would say to go with. So there you go. There you go. Hope that helps, uh, Tavares. And um, Jesus says, do you know of any green mowers for sale? I don't have any, but check with Jerry Pate Company. If you're in the, in the Atlanta area, check with Jerry Pate. They can get you taken care of. They sometimes have them that they get in that they will sell, and you can get a pretty good price uh, that way. And uh, let's see. Uh, and uh, R. Byersdorf, this will be the last comment, says, Dethatch or Verticut Bermuda? I would say Verticut. Verticut Bermuda. Verticut and turf rake, I would not, unless you've got like a crazy thatch problem, you, in most cases, Bermuda really, really needs to be dethatched. You know what I mean? But verticutting and turf raking, in most cases, is going to get the job done. And, and, and if you do need to dethatch, it's something you may only have to do once every couple of seasons, every few seasons. You know what I mean? It's not something every season. Whereas verticutting and turf raking is something I would do every season. Uh, dethatching is something if you're just trying to get a hold of the lawn and trying to get to, to improve, you know, you, you say you, you moved to a place and the lawn was neglected and it's got like a big a thatch problem. Yeah, use, de use a dethatcher, clean a lot of that out, but then you should be good for several years, really, especially if you, after dethatching, you start verticutting and turf raking. You're not, you shouldn't have a big thatch problem on your lawn after that. So hope that helps, guys. And uh, that should get you all squared away. As far as what is verticutting, Jesus, I will, um, you know, you can actually see, because I've got a live stream where I actually verticut the lawn. So versus telling, versus telling you and trying to explain it, I can just show it. So I'll put a link here in the chat if the YouTube will cooperate and... Uh, and show up here, it's, it's being slow, or Google's being slow, search isn't working. But if you look at my live streams, there's one where I, it's called top uh, 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 lawn prep, top dressing prep. And in that, in that live stream, yep, here we go, you'll actually get to see me verticut and turf rake the lawns. So if you wanna see both of them being done, you can see that here. So let me get shareable link, and then I will show you uh, verticutting Verticutting and turf raking live. Live. So you got them both right there. Watch that video. You can actually see it being done. And there we go. Um, and again, Kevin, where you can care, where can you get zero um, zoysia seeds? Um, check Hancock Seed. If anyone's gonna have it, they they'll have it. Check out check out Hancock Seed in Lakeland, Florida. And I think that's it, guys. Guys, I really do appreciate it so much. I really appreciate you guys coming to hang out in the live stream. I know it was, uh, we tried something different tonight. If you guys liked the whole thing of doing a um, the outside portion, let me know. I will do that more in the future. I'll definitely add that to the future thing. And when the days or the weather's nice, and I will stream from outside for a little bit. But, um, but yeah, thanks again, guys. I really, really do appreciate you guys hanging out. Have an amazing weekend. If you have any needs for fertilizer and other products, check out the golf course lawn store. See you guys next time.